Beyond Salt Marsh is a game played by adults and recorded for an adult audience. Sometimes we use adult language and explore adult topics. Consider yourself warned. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Superior Adventurers Guild. My name is Dave, your humble dungeon master, and we're going to jump into another episode of Beyond Salt Marsh. I'm really excited to be hanging out with my good buddies, and here they are, my friends. Hi, guys. How's everybody doing? Hello. Great. How about you? Fantastic. Good. Glad to be back. We took a week off, and uh, boy, did I miss you. Although I saw you a couple times for times, so. We were actually all together. <laughs> On multiple occasions. However, you, the viewer, whoever you are, mom, it's good to see you again. Um, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. Uh, why don't we start with Andy? Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Andy. I'm playing Runar Dig. He is now a ninth level. Got to update Ooh. my notes here. Human, dual wielding, battle master fighter, and current captain of the good buddy. And he's hot on the trail of some knolls. I like how you add current captain because <laughs> well, that leaves could... a lot of leaves a lot of leeway for certain things to happen, which is great. <laughs> As a DM, I salute you, sir. Uh, hi, Kirk. Still alive, Hello. anyway. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm Kirk. I'm playing Byron Her, the eighth level rogue, first level fighter, um, slash commander of a magical fey monkey and ruler of the Blink Dagger. And he is your battalion. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> my 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 the baboon army. Monkey. That's great. B B B B I can't never mind. You know, Byron Absolute has a friend, which is Marianne. nice. He's got a good little buddy. Yeah. He's got a good little buddy. Hello, it's, I like it's it. me, uh, Chad, otherwise known as uh, North Shore DM. I play Tenak Knuckle Bones, uh, divination wizard from the, the, the deep, deep jungles of the Amadio, mm. who's a halfling, but swole. He is ninth level. Ninth level. Good clarification. Thank yeah. you. You know, everyone else is doing it, so. Michael, what level are you? I mean, what level is your character? I don't know either of those answers, so I'm going to keep going. But my apparently nice. I can no longer speak either. We're done here. Oh, God. Yep. Um, hi, my name is Michael. I'm playing Theo. He's a Hexblade Warlock, the inevitable captain of the good buddy. And I'm just really excited to get back to um, the work. Mm -hmm. The work at hand. I like it. Interesting. Uh, we do have a couple of announcements. I want to start off by giving a big shout out to our campaign sponsor, CZRPG. Uh, our friend Christian and his team over there are amazing content creators and they create all kinds of great content for fifth editions dungeons and dragons like campaign settings uh character options maps uh, adventures all the types of things that you dms would need to put together really fun campaigns adventures and encounters and if you are a player uh this is something perhaps that you'd be interested in uh looking into for your dm they uh have their all of their library available at the uh one of my dms guild wow uh and there's a link right below michael's beautiful beautiful face yep and we'll also link it in our um descriptions on the youtubes and whatnots you'll be able to find all that stuff but yeah check them out they have a bunch of really good stuff and they have been supporting us and we want uh, to support them back so check out their content um chad Hell yeah Give us a little update on MK. Hello. Uh, tomorrow, there will be, uh, we are still on hiatus for Midwinter Keening. Uh, we will not be uh, streaming or recording. Um, I am on vacation, uh, but we'll be back next week uh, and we'll find out, uh, you know, what the heck is happening. The city's under siege and the roof of the temple just got blown off. Kind oh of. Oh my god! So, uh, yeah. yeah, we left on a bit of a cliffhanger. It is literally a bit of a fan. 
and that fan is a wood chipper aimed at your house. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That'll be fun. Um, have a great time on vacation. Thank I hope you. it involves grass skirts and coconuts. Uh, it's North Carolina, so probably not any of that. Barbecue and cheer wine, buddy. But there will be there will be a pedal <laughs> pub and some disc golf. So I'm oh, excited. Ooh. About it. I'm ex- well, put mosquitoes. I'm not really like pedal pub isn't really a thing I'm into, but it'll be cool, I guess. But disc golf I enjoy, so I gotta pack like three discs in my carry on. I, I also feel mm-hmm. like pub is something you're definitely into. Mm-hmm. It's just That's the pedaling part. Uh, Andy, you have uh, an announcement for us. Uh, I don't have much to say tonight. Oh, but. I do have something to say about our online merch store where you can get sweet t-shirts like this. Joker. You can get totes, coffee mugs, all with our wonderful logo on them, wall art. Mouse pads? I don't think you can get a mouse pad. All right. What what kind of service are we using? You could buy a tote and make your own mouse pad out of it. (laughs) Uh, yeah. The last time I did that, lots of different shirts, every different color, sweatshirts, hoodies, bathrobes, tank tops, mm-hmm. stickers, and slippers. Those Beep are my favorite. Beanbag. Slippers. Slouchies. We just need to sell pants, and then we we, we could have like a whole outfit. <laughs> a whole outfit. Yep. We just need a tracksuit. I love it. Just a so. Yeah, dude, where do we find that? Part. It's on where do we our find all that? T Public merch store. We we're not streaming tonight, but maybe tomorrow we'll throw it in a chat, or you can find it on our oh, yeah. Twitch page or our YouTube page. Heck yeah! Thanks, Andy. Or a Twitter link. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. We'll we'll get yeah. you links. You'll find it. Just look for it. You'll find it. Mm-hmm. It'll be. Uh, there. Any other announcements? Um. Anything hey, from the Rock Sauce there, Committee? I've I've talked about it a lot, but. Uh, Virtual Game Hole Con and Virtual Greyhawk Con are coming up in the month of October. Greyhawk Con at the beginning of the month, Game Hole Con at the end of the month. Um, we're going to be, uh, Dave and I are both running games. Um, Dave's running a game at Greyhawk Con. It's full, but you can watch it here. And I'm running a game, two games at Greyhawk, uh, Game Hole Con. Um, check them out. There'll be links. Um, Awesome. Registration for the game hole stuff starts this week today or today tomorrow 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 the first yep. yeah so September first uh, event registration for virtual game hole con and physical game hole con starts tomorrow um, lots of awesome stuff check it out um, it's gonna be fun so it starts tomorrow uh, September first is when it begins yep. so I'm a yep. little concerned about your vacation Chad because you said you're leaving tomorrow and it's actually the first today. Mm. So you didn't miss your flight, did you? Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. Just double check. Oh, wait. That's like yeah. shit. We're, I'm leaving tomorrow the 2nd. <laughs> it leaves in 10 today, minutes. <laughs> today is September 1st. Today, Game Hole, virtu- Game Hole Con registration is live. Oh, oh. that's yeah. fun. And I did get my game switched from for children now to, I think, 13 and up. <laughs> okay. That's okay. what they gave me, 13 and up. I probably I'll have to edit that if uh, if anybody 13 between 13 and 19 comes and joins my game. I'm not known oh as, a, as a soft talking guy. Well, uh, we hope to see you all there at those cons. It should be fun. Uh, anybody else have any announcements to make? Kirk, did you want to say hi to anybody special tonight? Are there any special um, birthdays today, Kirk? Well, special shout out to uh, Earthrider Brewery. You did it again. Phenomenal. Phenomenal oh, cloud, cloud top, top hazy so IPA. <laughs> I didn't expect it. Stony Kirk's Point's my favorite liter- still, but holy moly. Earthrider. He's literally just you. looking around for something. Uh, big uh, shout uh, out uh. to um, Pilot G2 Pens. Uh, fantastic <laughs> pens. No we way. really appreciate that. I agree. Right <laughs> oh, there. no. Oh, somebody give I them a call. You and you know what? If you if you're just having trouble, now I'm done. All right. You know what? Shout out to right now. <laughs> oh my god! All right, we're not sponsored by any of those people. Stop it. Nah, but we do like their beer. 
and their pens. All right, let's move on. Um, let's jump into a quick recap. How do you like that? I like it. A I think lot. it'll be. I think it'll be real nice. It'll be real, real nice. Okay. Hey guys, in our last episode, the Dead Gang joined Nimui Carneros, the Lombacayan medicine woman, in an attempt to channel the healing magic of the Zellberry Blossom to aid the Omen monster hunter Zanara, who had been infected with the aberration spawn. Mosangi's spore. You breathe deeply of the burning plants in order to connect with the wisdom of the plant, and each of you found yourself expanding into a dreamlike realm that held secrets and knowledge unique to your path. You first caught a glimpse of an individual from your past, a parent, a friend, a connection of significance and a message of import. But the hallucination quickly faded and a new reality materialized. Theo found himself amongst soldiers and above them banners decorated with the familiar heraldry of deep blue adorned with a familiar crown sun, the knights of the great kingdom of Airdy. Byron followed a path into a colorful grove where he joined the Hierophant of Biori, the great druid Andama Elusi, as well as the creatures that he'd set free from their captivity, his friends. Tenok's path led to a dark panorama of chaos and destruction shown to him by Mother Tiger, a possible future with pain and suffering for his people. Runar traveled through numerous memories of grief, sorrow, and the burden of guilt, but he found himself strangely empowered by a sense of self-forgiveness and an indomitable will to survive. Each of you in your own unique experience found growth in these visions, powers and abilities bestowed by patrons, self-determination, spirit guides, and connections to the world. The following morning, you woke to a new day. Runar joined Dan Virius and a villager in a hunt while Byron and Theo deciphered a new message from Dralian's journal. Tenok sent word to Nadar Kimbatul, his contact with the Mariconia family, of their status, and learned that the Lord's Trident, along with Dr. Gra's cargo, never arrived in Monmerg. Later, Nimue confided with you that the Olman woman retained her infection and that she would not be permitted to remain in the village. There was no future for her now. With that so somber understanding, you returned to Zanar and found her conscious but afflicted. Zanara readily acknowledged her fate and warned of the dangers surrounding the plague should it be allowed to spread. Her people had kept the Mosengi confined to the Bodal River Valley for centuries, but it had escaped with Gra's unwitting expedition to their land. Byron stepped forward and gave Zanara the mercy she needed. The four of you stepped from the hut and Theo burned it to ash, cleansing the village from the Mosengi threat. With the deed done and the Mosengi quest, to your knowledge, completed, you made preparations for a two-day overland journey to Farazin's Cove, the possible location of the Snarltooth Savages pirate ship. And we pick up with our story during your journey through the dense forests of Cybert Isle, my friends. I have a question for you as we get started. How are each of your characters feeling about what happened with Zanara and the Mosangi curse? I, I feel Not pretty good about it. Theo, on the other hand, not pleased that they couldn't do more. Yeah, it would have been would have been nice to save her. And yeah. Learn more from her. Yes, you did have just a brief moment to talk with her, that's for sure. Um, as you guys travel through the jungle, uh, it's a two day journey and we don't need to like draw it out, but I'm wondering if there's anything that you have to discuss either from things that you learned from the journal entry that you deciphered, or maybe reflecting back on what's going on with the, that whole sort of thing, perhaps the Mosengi quest, perhaps what lies ahead. Um, but if, if there's something that you guys want to discuss, this would be a good time as we have a, just a bit of quote unquote downtime as you journey through the jungle. You do have a map, so you do have the aid of that to find uh, um, the cove. I just, I just want to clarify what we're actually, are we marching to, so we're marching to where Certain the death. no oh, dudes are, right? The, yes. The no pirates or whatever. Okay. I, I didn't. I didn't remember right that. away if we were going there on foot or if we were going to go get the boat and come around. Um, we were well, going on foot. So there's four of us against however many there are there. Totally normal it's stuff we do all the time. I guess that. Well, mate, this, you still have five of us. Follow says five, Dan Virius. Yeah. Five, five of us. 
in that little guy points over at Chuck. Chuck's like swinging branch to branch, staying kind of close to me. Where did he come from? Uh, oh. Um. Well, remember when we all did a bunch of drugs in that hut? It was literally yesterday. Yeah, it feels like days ago. I am exhausted still, by the way. Um, I well, feel great. Well, what's her name? Lucy? Madama Lucy? You know, she kind of... She, Chuck didn't want to stay with her. He wanted to come with me, so... Wait, you got a hot date? Who's Chuck? I feel like my, I made, my friend here. The short end of that stick. I'll call Chuck over. He'll jump down. And he'll like become Where really was? small and stand on my shoulder. Wait, like, wait. He's still a baboon, but looks like a. Hey, wait, he can ship sizes. I, I think so. You don't. You don't want to carry like a four foot baboon on your shoulder. No, he can just know, ride on you piggyback. I mean, he could. Yeah, he's not a full size baboon. He's he's a fey baboon, a little bit smaller. Okay. He's about half the size. Yep. <laughs> like an adolescent baboon. Yeah. Nah, even <laughs> smaller than that. He's <laughs> abnormally small. He's abnormally small. You would okay. you'd be looking at him like a baboon, you're like a baboons aren't supposed to be that small. He's like a he's like a baboon the size of uh like one of those like golden mustache monkeys. Yes. Maybe yep. one of those Japanese yep. Japanese. Japanese I was macaques. thinking the, the ones yeah. that like bang the symbol. Oh, the organ grinder monkey or whatever? Uh, I don't know. They well, like, run like around with to collect money. I was thinking like snow monkey. I mean, snow monkeys are a good size. Yeah. What about a marmoset? I, mean, I guess they're not baboons. baboons. Yeah, they're not as big as baboons. Neemer, Neemer are big freaking monkeys. Either way, Theo is still <laughs> alarmed at how small it is. Is it sick or is it is, has something happened to him? Was it um, cursed? No, he's free. He's... He's just, uh, we're friends now, you know? I mean, well, we were friends before, but now we're, you know, she said something. It was like, uh, she, she said, like, I was familiar with him or something. I don't remember exactly, but yeah. Are so you now we're, familiar with him? Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're friends. It's Chuck. Didn't Chuck all shit in his hand and throw some at Theo? <laughs> It'll be a mental I, command. I like oh, it. Oh, no. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's off-putting. Hey. That's, um, that's, that's um, the thing with monkeys. Let's um, let's distract ourselves from the horrifying miniature baboon for a second that has all sorts of existential implications and focus something on, on something a bit more terrifying but pertinent. Um, what are we doing after Fort and get back to Monmark? Well, are we going to go back to Monmark? We have to hunt down the ship. Yeah, we're we're going to where the gnolls supposedly right now. are. Yeah. Yep. I mean, like after the gnolls, we have to hunt down Gra's ship because that had all of his notes on it. And if we don't destroy that ship and all the notes on it, then this thing could get out. So, what are we doing after the after we deal with that? I mean, that uh, depends on what plan here. Deal with that, right? Yeah, that depends on if we can deal with that. One thing to also remind you, Theo, you do have a journal that you picked up from the remains of the Mosengi, if you recall. Survey says... You have Gra's journal. I do! Yeah. And my character's doing a lot of work to make sure it doesn't come out as long as we've got Dan Varius with us. That's right. Yeah, well, yeah, we heard that. All signs point south, right? Well, so far. For what we're doing, we were going for a uh, to find a mythical place that doesn't exist. Tamojan. Mm. Tamojan. So, is that is the plan to get back to Monmerg and you know then get set up, take some time, see if there's anything else we need to do, and then continue in that direction. Yeah, I mean, I think we have the money now to be self-sufficient for a while. You know, that was kind of the uh, what held us back from just going straight south before, right? Um, no, we got embroiled with all this business shit. Well, we took this job to earn some money and, you know, 
that always helps. We got a crew we got to pay. Oh, no, I understand. I just wanted to make sure that's where we're still going. It's been a few weeks. We met the nice Mr. Knucklebones here. I don't know if he wants to go find Tomoe Chan. Um, also, have we explained yeah. to you that there may be a secret brotherhood of evildoers trying to kill us? Yeah. There's no. a lot. There's a lot Tenek doesn't know, I suppose. Okay. There's a secret brotherhood of evildoers trying to kill you? We'll explain to him everything that happened in Saltmarsh. <laughs> Hey, yeah. hold, before we do Role that... play it. Let's go. <laughs> no, Come on. <laughs> are you officially signing on to the crew for a long-term uh, employment? Yeah, you want to stick around? You're going south? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Then All right, that was easy. Let me tell you about the bullshit that happened in Saltmarsh. I literally was hired at first to pick up these fuckers' corpses. And it only gets weirder from there. Wait, you... What? You picked up we, their corpses? We didn't always have a boat, either. Hold on. And then Theo has to stop in the trail. Fuck, the only person whose corpse I was hired at this point that's still here was Runar. <laughs> um, oh, Captain, my Captain. Uh, uh, and then, yes, we'll spend the time relaying all the bullshit that happened there. What a tangled web you weave. Holy shit, I don't remember any of this. You've been through some shit, fellas. Some real shit. The, the important part is, I'm sure Theo ends up saying around the campfire that night, is don't go back to fucking Salt Marsh. We're not sure if it's full of vampires yet, and we haven't been able to figure out how to fix it. Duly noted. We do. Well, I don't know if we want to go that way, but... I, I don't really want to go that way. I'm on a mission. That Zolak that guy said something interesting. He said a lot of things. What did he yeah, say? I'm not saying I want to go back there, but he said he used to fight the followers of St. Cuthbert. I don't know yeah, those guys is. are dicks. Uh, They're on your side, generally. Still dicks. I don't know anything about St. Cuthbert. Oh, um, He sounds like a decent guy. He's... Technically, he's map. like a ma super major religion. In yeah, it's, mm -hmm. he, he is the god of hitting people with a stick because they're evil. I I think I like him. <laughs> it's great it's as pretty, they don't think you're evil. There's a pretty good chance that Byron would would know Cuthbert. Okay, I, I you like him. We used to have a map where there was something about Saint Cuthbert on the map to the west was I'm there? Getting, like a little off track but um just throwing it out there there used Did to be we? like yeah there was there was an old map that we used to look at all the time that had, that had Cuthbert on it yeah like something about him on a little to west southwest of salt marsh it was probably the abbey of saint cuthbert that was the abbey on abbey isle that was which is where theo was hired to pick up your corpses I don't remember St. Cuthbert being involved in that, but... Yeah, I remember. Doesn't, I guess I doesn't don't remember anything. There's a lot I don't remember. But, yeah. Interesting, though. Okay. If we went back, we'd probably have to deal with Zolek. I mean, inevitably, yeah. I would like to go back and deal with Zolek, but I think we need to finish what we're working on first. All I care about is making it to hell and free here in front. Oh, that's the a, that's, of the that's a long term goal, definitely. Aphis must be deleted. There's no there's no arguing with that. We're, we will Aphis. at some point travel to hell and murder him. Huh. Yeah, you have had an interesting time of it. <laughs> We've been yeah. to hell and back. We once yep. got our pockets <laughs> picked by an asshole bard in the Dreadwood. That's not that weird. Yeah, that guy. We need to kill that guy, too. <laughs> well, yeah, we Byron did used to have a list. We, we, we did set that guy up a little bit. Only if, if you're lucky. Yeah. Uh, if he ever goes down. into what? Salt Marsh. Yeah. We set that guy. He had a fucking Oni on our ass. <laughs> he, uh, we set him up for in Salt Marsh, though. We framed him, remember? Yep, we did. Oh, that's true. We did do that. 
So if he shows up there, he's going to get... Yeah, they're going to put pull him aside and he's going to be blamed for uh, a bunch of stuff. Tenok, did you share your conversation with Nadar with the group already? Um, you shared that? I, you know, I don't remember. Uh, I feel like I did, but I can't 100% say that I did. Um, but obviously, well, you can if you want. If you wanted to, it. you could. So. Theo knows about it because so he's already brought it up. Okay, um, but yeah. So uh, if I haven't, I'll. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll let them know that, yeah, the ship is never made it to Monmerg, or at least never made it into the hands of um, uh, whatever his guy, what, what's his name? Uh, uh, Marconia. Um, and that, yeah, they would like us to go talk to them. Go back to Monmerg? Yeah. That's concerning. So, yeah. so, well, it's business. So we need to find that ship. I don't no, know how we're going to find that. I don't know how we're going to find that ship. If only one of us had connections with the past, the future, and the present all as one. Have you ever... Runar, is there something you're not telling us that you can do? If only one of us was a divination wizard. Yeah, I know. Runar, you're a wizard. Only one <laughs> I feel of like us that. had uh, a finding. I got it. It's on the water right now. It's somewhere in the ocean. It's totally got dragged on land. How much you want to bet, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking land sharks. <laughs> but they dragged it onto land. Do you guys all just as out of, out of character? Do you guys also remember? Why you why you took the job from Mariconia to come and find the doctor to skip town um, because someone yeah. murdered Billy Ray Cyrus? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna bring that Lord up. William I didn't, Cyrus Ray. I didn't Lord think, William I didn't Cyrus think Ray. Bringing that I up was a good idea. I briefly forgot yeah. about that. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, we could run into the mob. The yeah, we won't tell mob when we go back. Well, I was thinking I'd go back into disguise and not leave the ship when we go back to Monbirds. Because there's no way that the secret police of a uh, port town know anything about our ship. I'm sure they know about the ship, but do they know? Do I know anything about, about, about a secret McKillen police in Monberg? Um, roll a history check. All right, I'm gonna do it. But first, you know, first also, roll of the night. Would we'll just take him out, man? Can't find my character sheet. Here we go. You are saying you would like to take on the entire political structure of the holds of the Sea Prince. No, just the mob. 13. That's it. They're, the, whole, 13? the whole government just, is not after. Just the Iron. mob. It's the, the government it's, is the mob. It's like yep. the crooked organization that was, I don't know. He was a made man of the Sea Princes. Well, uh, he was Bruno. trying to summon a devil, and so I killed him. Runar, where and are you I don't from? feel bad. Runar, where are you actually from? Are you from Keoland? Yeah. So, we killed a duke. So, duke? no noble or anyone in power is okay with that happening because then they're worried it will happen to them. Right. So, we are very marked... We might be able to sweep it under the rug long enough to get in and out a couple of times, but we can't stay there much. Well, he was summoning a devil. They're nobles. They don't give a shit. You He's know how they are. Douche. I mean, when we come to it, I can... Since I was not privy to that action, I can get into town and find the lay of the land. I think Mariconia will have us covered at least long enough to go talk to his people. From there, we can figure it out. But I'm just saying it's going to be a hot town for a while. Well, I don't disagree. Um, yeah, I am seeing that now. A, that says he is well known. Course, at, sorry. He is, of course, about business. And if business is swinging a different way, then that then all bets are off. 
All right, so we won't storm Monmerg when we go back. We'll just uh, slide in there a little subtly. subtly. With with a thirteen, you don't really you don't really pick up on what they're talking about with this this sort of like secret police thing or this the made man, but you do know that there is a very um, there is a very well defined hierarchy, social and political hierarchy. You don't really understand all the ins and outs of it because you haven't really spent that much time in Monmerg, but you know it that exists. Okay, yep. that makes I'm sense. Just, I'm just noticing in my notes it says, well-known ally of the prince, <laughs> Lord Willis, Cyrus William Ray. So, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was just a ma- he was like a made guy. I didn't know I mean, he was like... That's a made guy. <laughs> yeah, there's Lord. like there's like mobsters, then there's like enforcers, then there's like Trusted lieutenants, and then there's made men. Yeah, it's like we killed Donnie Brasco. Yeah, we it's killed Donnie Brasco. <laughs> oh boy. Except for Donnie Brasco was a cop, so that's a whole different weird game, yeah. but undercover. All right, let's do this. Everybody roll a survival check for me. Yeah. yeah. As you are Coming navigating already. through the. You're navigating through the jungle. You do have a map, so the difficulty challenge rating is going to be low. Uh, we got 17. Oh, yeah. You guys have no problem making it through the first day. Uh, for Byron. And it, <laughs> oh, Byron is chronically uh, distracted by the uh, the jungle and his Let's, new friend. But not the bugs. Exactly. Now the bugs are, are leaving me alone. Not the bugs. I actually feel pretty good. Leveraged, leveraged, universal <laughs> bug repellent during his level up montage. <laughs> that was genius. Well played. well played, sir. Well played. Thank you. Thank you. Um, roll. Let's see. Theo, roll a d twenty for me. Sorry, I rolled a D10, and then rolled a D20 correctly, and only got me to a 9. Okay, that's fine. You guys make it through the first day and the first night, no problem. Uh, you set up watches as you usually do. The weather seems to be uh, very pleasant. The, the rain, for the time being, seems to have subsided, and the jungle, in this, at least in this part, as you head south on the island, uh, is a little bit more dry. And about halfway through the second day you're making really good time with this map halfway through the second day you begin to smell the ocean air and hear the familiar crash of waves i smell the ocean you all hear the waves (laughs) (laughs) and you make your way further along eventually emerging from the dense tropical jungle and you ascend to a ridge line. There's short scrub brush and grasses and rocky outcrops. And you can see below you, some hundred feet below you, the vast azure sea that reaches out to the horizon. A welcome sight after more than, I'm estimating more than a week, you've been trekking through the island's interior. You've finally made your way back to the coast, a very different part of the island than you started in but you are on the coast uh, nonetheless. And you see this ocean vista, gulls and other shorebirds flying in the distance. It's kind of a bluebird sky, really pleasant. As you scan to the west, it looks like just a normal day, but as you look to the east, you see a dense bank of fog that seems to hang unnaturally low near the shoreline. That looks scary, guys. Let's go that, uh, west. That looks like where we need to go. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's where we're headed, isn't it? Oh, man. You I'm know, willing to bet you a reasonable sum of money that, in fact, that is going to be where we need to go. Any, any will, takers? Yeah. Any takers? I got five gold. Well, I was just wondering, you know, what if you just cast Sickening Radiance on it? From here? Yeah, just burn it up. Just burn up One. the bug. I have to get very close. Two, there is no guarantee that it will take care of the fog, depending on how it reacts to the radiance. Uh, third of all, um, 
you know, I can't do that very often, like, right? Like, I can do it, and then I need to, like, take a breather. I'm more of, like, a sprinter of magical power, not less of a marathon runner like uh, Dear Tenok. As you can tell, look at how well-developed his uh, calves are. That's true. I have very nice oh. calves. <laughs> well, I mean... Mm. With my spyglass, can I make anything out from here? Ooh, yeah! Oh, yeah you buddy. bust out the spyglass. Oh, let's yeah. get a let's get a perception check. The most valuable thing we own. Is that just straight perception? <laughs> All right. No, I just I just looked it up. Yeah. Let you see farther, definitely. Ooh, very okay, nice. Buddy. 19. Yeah. So you you take out the spyglass and you you kind of hone in on this this bent, dense bank of fog and you see it extends for quite some ways, but it seems to have a a definitive boundary that hovers around what appears to be a low-lying area near the ocean shoreline. You cannot see into the the fog whatsoever. It's completely obscured. But you can see that there is a distinct edge to this this bank of fog, and it does cover some land. It covers some land as well as the um, what you can pick out as ocean as some well. Ocean. Yep, kind of straddles the shoreline. Mm. Seems like it seems unnatural, right? Like it's almost like just plopped there. Yeah. Yep. You look about you and there's a there's a breeze flowing, you know, blowing, excuse me, through the air, uh but it it just seems to sit and just kind of hover. It's not like it's not static where it doesn't move, but you can just see it's kind of like stuck almost. Like a temperature inversion if you've ever seen one of those. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that that fog isn't reacting with the wind around it. It's definitely suspicious. I think that's where we should go. This is why you are the captain. Come, let us go. Let's move. You know, I will say I may have grown up in the jungle, but it is nice to see the ocean again. Smells good. She is a beauty to behold. You guys continue east towards the bank of fog, and as you get closer, it starts to loom more significantly in front of you. As you can see that it extends upward, and now it extends downward you can see as you're walking along the, the cliff side that the cliff still dropped down about 50 to 100 feet, but it's completely obscured, this column of, of dense fog. You hear the squawk of gulls that kind of guide you towards the, the shoreline. So we're now at like the edge of the fog. You make your way closer and closer, and as you approach the bank of fog, roll a perception check, everybody, please. Ooh. Nope. 16, baby. Seven. Three. Natural one, seven. Oof. Uh, Theo and Byron, you you hear it while Tenok and Runar, you fail to pick up on it right away. But Byron and Theo, you, you think you hear maybe voices in the mists? Possibly whispers of some kind? I'm just going to go ahead and arm myself now. Pull my shield. Pull my dagger. Theo uh, pulls his, you know, has the sword out. He'll make it apparate, because why not? I hear voices in the mist. Yeah, this is, like, this is spooky, guys. I, I feel like this is... They mentioned these whispers and how they, they kill people. Alright, I'll pull my shield. Okay. That's it for now. You pull your shield. Theo, you pulled your weapon. You have your weapon drawn. Byron, you pull your weapon and you pull your mic closer to your mouth. And, uh, and <laughs> Tenok. I crack my knuckles. Okay. You know what, so you're, you're standing there at the edge of the mist. What do you do? Theo, Theo. Yeah. Sickening radiance. 
I just have a scorch it. I have a different idea. Okay, what is it? Let's hear it. And uh, Theo holds his hand up to the uh, edge of the fog bank, um, murmurs a few words, and you know the uh, the pommel of his magic sword kind of glows blue for a second, and a uh, you know a just circle of blue runes uh, encompass his hand for a minute, and I, he will cast dispel magic at fifth level. Mm. Okay. Oh, oh boy! Wow! Nice. Love. All right. All right. Uh, roll to dispel the magic. Turns out it was a natural phenomenon the whole time. <laughs> I want it. Those weird atmospheric things. Trying to remember what I spell. Make an ability check using spell casting ability. Okay. Yep. Did we just hear a lion in the mist? <laughs> was that what that, was that what that was? Are we hearing gorillas in the mist? <laughs> Byron, keep your mouth quiet. I did, not, I did not sign on for that shit. <laughs> oh. 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 Wow. Okay. So, nice, Theo, you hold your hand up and you cast your spell and there is an immediate dissipation of fog within a five foot sphere around you it, extending into the mist momentarily it, it it opens up and you can see everything within that sphere and then it just swallows it back up wow this is powerful magic Oh, show. So we gotta get the hell out of here, guys. Did you see anything in there? <laughs> nope. I saw there in there? water. I saw a rock or two. I definitely yeah, is there like a cliff edge right in front of us? Do beach? we see that? <laughs> <laughs> you guys can see, I mean, you can see like five to ten feet into it. It's not like, a, it's not opaque. 100% right. opaque, like, but it is, it's a thick mist, but when he did that, you just watched as the mist, like, evaporated momentarily and you could see about five to ten feet unobstructed we see and it just ship? looked like the terrain went nope it just looked like it continued forward uh the same kind of terrain that you're standing on are we essentially like on a beach no you're on like an uplands on a cliff side Okay. The, the the ocean is, as far as you can tell, from the unobscured area that you're currently standing in, looking down, mm -hmm. about 100 feet is the ocean smashing against the, uh, its waves kind of smashing up against the, the cliff face. And you're up on top of that cliff. Oh, we haven't. Okay, I see. What do you think? Should we go in here or find a different route? Yeah, we're on a trail. Not really. There might be like a game trail, perhaps, um, but you don't really see a specific trail. There's no like pathway or road or anything like that. I think Dave is trying to uh, back end us into Curse of Strahd, so I'm suggesting we walk away right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I like that you said, Theo. Let's get the hell out of here. Is there? I, I, that's that's me, the player, making a joke in character. It's like, perhaps we should see if we can go down along the beach just so we don't fall off. Is there a beach, or is it just waves on cliff face? Uh, you're gonna go look over the edge and take a peek, Byron. Go ahead and roll a perception check. All right, I did say I pulled my shield. Yep. I'm gonna get a good look. Twenty. Nice. Uh, as far as you can tell, it's rugged cliff face. It appears as though there are like storm petrels and other uh, shorber, like cliff dwelling seabirds that have nested on the cliff's edges, but it's straight down and then you can see the ocean waves just crashing into rocks and uh, it looks super treacherous. There's no beach below. I could, Let's uh, not go down to the beach. I could try to find us a path perhaps. Could there be a boat over here? I assume so, but I this that was the idea I had. Please, anyone else? I will um, reach into my pouch and pull out some uh, ruined bones. 
and give them a cast of mm. divination. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I will loop loop. Um, ask a single question. Um, I will ask uh, uh, oh this is tight. This is tight, 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 tight. Um, I will ask I will ask what is the safest path Mm. to uh, these foes we seek. Okay. Yeah. You cast your the bones and you go through your divination ritual and you, you request guidance. And you hear from within the the mists the squawk of birds as they seem to fly past you somehow and then they start to fade off into deeper into the mists i will hopefully uh, interpret that correctly and say perhaps we should follow those birds Did we hear the birds? Uh, you did not hear the birds. Mm-hmm. What birds? Uh, this way. Right into the mist. The bones, okay. the bones tell me this way. Uh, you heard the man. I uh, like no. you when you're doing the I'm all muscly and buff thing and punching things, and then you do the creepy voice thing, and I don't like you. I'm kidding. I like you just as much when you do that, too. You're amazing. I'm going to punch him in the dick. Hey, fellas, you think man. this is a good idea? Damn, very cool. Tanakh hasn't steered us that wrong. That was a dumb yet. question. Do you think uh, we need to do this would be a better question then, I guess, mates? Nope. nope. Yes. Okay, it's then. The people of this island. It's up to the captain. He pulls an arrow out of his quiver and knocks his, in, the arrow in his bowstring and steps in line to follow you in. What's the marching order as you enter the mists? Yeah, I see. We go for it. All right. Um, I'll go first. Yeah, I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. I will follow Rumor. I will be second. I will be third. I'll be fourth. Okay, and Danvers will go last. I'm going to uh, switch out my shield from my bow. Okay. All right, you guys make your way into the mist. And as you do, I need each of you to roll a wisdom saving throw for me. As the the voices that Theo and Byron heard become audible to all of you the minute you step into the mists. Oh boy. 16. The number to beat is a 14. Ooh, 11. Oh no, Runar. Um, oh no, what? me. Oh no, me. <laughs> yep, you can <laughs> roll a new roll. You can roll um, a new roll. I'm going to try my Indomitable. Come on, baby. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> son of a pup. What about Dan Various? Dan Various will roll too. Where are you, mate? Ah, no. Uh, Tenok, do you want to use your uh, whatever that skill, that ability is that you have? I have to use it first. Oh, you do? Yeah. Ooh, I rolled a 20 for Dan Virius. So he's going to be. Yeah, at least he's fine. Yeah, you must choose to do. S- I really hate that they that they word it. They word it. Uh, you can replace, but then it says, "But you must choose to do this before the roll." 
So you're not really replacing anything. No, you're not. Well, you're replacing the role. I, not I the guess. result of not, the role. Not the result. It's which not is, before which, you know you succeeded or failed. So right, if I wouldn't have said says before you roll. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when I said like the number to beat is 14, that automatically precludes. And I you from really, I th- I thought about using it because I have a, a 20 and an 18 right now for the day. Do you guys like knowing what the number to beat is, or would you rather not know? I think it's. I like. E- think it's better for play. Yeah, I like knowing it. To know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. With saving yeah, throws, really. it's with saving throws. Yeah, or like armor classes. Obviously, I don't necessarily want to know, but like saving throws, I've. Yeah. It, like it's I've been kind of going back and forth on it lately. I've been, I've been saying what it is just because it's. I don't know. I thought it'd be more interesting, but if it screws think, up your ability, here, here's what we'll do. If you want to use it on a saving throw, you can use it on a saving throw. It's up to you. Yeah, I'm. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm going to roll with what I got. Okay. All right, so the minute that you walk into this, the only people that saved are going to be Theo and Danvirius. You hear these these voices, Theo. You've come, you've been, you're here, yes, come. Come closer, come to us. And then uh, Runar, Byron, and Tenok. I'm going to let you guys sort of have a role in how this plays out, but you immediately hear these voices and you catch glimpses of people that pass through the mists, speaking to you, coming up to you, and then moving away and disappearing. Um, and they, for the next 10 minutes, you are convinced that there's something just beyond the mists, just over there that you have to, that it's rich, whatever it is that you desire right now, each of your characters, it's here and you're going to find it. Oh, right no. before they start doing whatever they're going to do, Theo says kind of just out loud, fuck, it's the ladies. And then... Uh, whoa, did you hear that? Did you see that? Ladies? Did you say ladies? Byron's looking around. I don't think they're ladies. I yeah, think it's no, money. I think the, it's the, money and, and daggers. The ladies of the Elder Grove. That sounds like the type of shit the they would items. do. Magical items. We got friends. all the magic, the daggers, the daggers, and the money. Yes. My the ship daggers <laughs> hey, the I ship. only need one dag, and I've got them right here. Guys, the ship guys, is follow right me here. this way. Follow me this way. The I'll ship. start walking through the woods. Runar, uh, the ship. Watch out. Watch guys, this way. The cliff. the cliff. Oh, fuck. Oh, we can go this way. There's the thing that we have to do. It's right over here. It's No, no, no. It's over this way. No, 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 seriously, it's, guys, come on. Thing is this, look, like, you can see I'll it. I can see it right and there. Back and I'll grab. Who am I right next to? Runar. What is going mm-hmm. on here? Runar, come with me. There be I'll start walking. Yeah, it's right up the here. Bit. It's right up yeah. here. Yeah, I know. Let's Fellas, go. you guys start walking off in various directions. Dead yeah. right. Fellas, Fellas. Stay Fellas. Stay what captain. do we do? Stay on the captain, and I... Theo is going to try and put uh, a hand on Byron and Tenok at the same time. Just get, whoa, hold on. Stick together. Stick together. Oh, Dig, come right back. Here. We stick go. together. We gotta go over here. What? What? We Theo, can, roll a persuasion we, check. We can save everyone, the tentacles and the, the Terran space and time. Yeah. Dan Virus is going to roll a 13 in his persuasion check. 27. Oh, wow. As Theo apparently convincingly goes, stick together, we will get there. We have to stick together to get to the things. Come on, guys. You're absolutely right. right. Okay. Tell you what. Uh, You're going to help me get there. Yes. Which way do I need to go to help you get there? Uh, Follow me. This way. way. And I'll I'll, I'll point the way, the original way we were going, because I also know that that is an appropriate way. Yep. I will also Since I am now convinced the way that I was going, I'm, which may or may not be the same this? way as Tenok is going. Go Runar, slowly, there might be a cliff. Runar, you hear uh, the voices calling to you, telling you of a ship in riches in the cove. Come and find your ship, they keep telling you. Byron, uh, you keep hearing about treasure, buried treasure and, and great weapons of great value and power just up ahead and Tenok, the the uh, the answers to the riddles that you've been seeking of of the of this destruction and chaos of your homeland, 
you'll unlock all the knowledge that you need to defeat this chaos just just up ahead in the cove. And you feel pulled, but not to the point where it's like you don't like protect your own safety, but you are you have a compelling purpose to go deeper and deeper and you make your way in with Theo and Dan Virius giving you some guidance along the way and uh Dan Virius ho- pulls on you Runar on your shoulder and stops you in your in your place what? stop what is it what and he points with his other hand past your face and just kind of points what is that up ahead can i see it how Roll far actually check. that's a good if I may, real quick, how far actually can we see in this fog? Like, what's our? You can field see of five vision? feet. You can see five feet very well. It's foggy and misty, but you can see. Ten feet is is like um, partial obscurity. Beyond fifteen feet is complete obscurity. If you said perception, yeah, perhaps a sword and shield would be better than a a bow and arrow right now. Mm. Twenty three. Runar, he points it out and you look ahead, peering into the mist, and you see this, this forceful gust of wind and ocean air that clears the view in front of you momentarily, and you see for just a moment what appears to be structures up ahead. And they're quickly obscured by the fog again. I saw houses or some kind of structure up ahead. Tents? Was it tents? What was that? Yeah, he, agreeing with Tenok, I'm going to stow my bow. Pull my yeah, shield again. Probably coming up on them, lads. There's something up ahead, for sure. Dan Virus yeah. will stow his bow at, at, and follow your lead with that as well. And Theo takes out both of their bows. Ha! Magic trick! <laughs> <laughs> I have two bows! <laughs> One for each of you. So, you guys continue ahead in the fog... Or what do you do? You you have the feeling that there's something up ahead, some structures in the mist. How long has it been? Three minutes or so? Uh, I'd say more like ten. Uh, so does that mean the whispers have stopped? The whispers start to fade. Mm. Okay. And you start to feel less compelled to c- continue forward. And you feel as though your wits have sort of come across you again. Oh, man. But you also would, feel like the three of you who failed your wisdom save, you feel like you really don't know where you are hmm. in the mist. I mean, you know where you are, but like you, the mists are very confusing to you. It's almost like you've been like walking with your eyes closed and all of a sudden you open your eyes. Disoriented. Yep. Yeah. And, and various, which way was that? Which way was that that we saw that? Just up ahead. This way. So lead on, should we do it on? Carefully. Perhaps with stealth. Mm. Wait. What if we left and never came back here ever? It might be too late for that, mate. Yeah, we're in yeah. it. We'll sad, buddy. Okay. Um. Oh man, I was so sure we were gonna get rich or find urine or something cool, but. Look on the bright just, side. We still might one of those. <laughs> still might um, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Maybe maybe a torch would be good. Maybe some extra no light. light or something. A torch no is light. going to give us away. Let us let us sneak forward. What are we hiding from? It's fog. Whoever lives up ahead. Oh. Uh, someone lives up here? The voices. I thought that was the fog. No, it's probably the ladies of the Elder Grove. It's going to be a great uh, time. Oh, crikey. Let's hope not, folks. Yeah, that would that would suck. If if it uh, is what happens, which I'm reasonably certain it will, you may forever tell me you told me so on this one, Byron. You know, I was going to pull off. I was going to, you know, I was going to mention, um, I don't know if you remember this uh, temple that we went to a while back. Um filled with uh, mummy and stuff. Oh, that was a great time. What are you talking about? Come on. I told you we shouldn't go there, and we went there, and look what happened, and now we're in this fog. So if we're going to do yeah, this, we might as well just, oh, balls to the wall, let's get wild, let's do this. I'm going to 
just get really angry, and I'm going to send Chuck out to explore further ahead. All right. And I'm going to and I'm going to wrap my arms around Theo's back and and look through Chuck's eyes. As Byron, he's I love ahead. you too. But um, is this the right time to get carry this me, close? Carry me, Theo. My Chuck is up ahead. <laughs> Carry me, Theo. Chuck is up ahead. You heard the man. Let's go. Yeah. (laughs) We'll just follow Chuck. So, yep. So, Chuck is going to be bounding ahead. Um, What do I see through Chuck's eyes? Roll a perception check with disadvantage, please. Oh, wow. Oh, disadvantage. Oh, wow. Yep. Chuck uh, sneaks. Seven. Yeah, he, he sneaks forward, and you can see just thick fog. And he does get up to a point where he can peer over this little ledge, and there's what appears to be a some sort of a canvas structure. But he would have to get much closer to figure out what it is. I will send him closer. Um, as he gets long as up closer. Yep, he's within 100 feet. So you guys are probably like 30 feet out from where he is. Okay. And he walks into this space and there are tents. There's a ring of tents in an open uh, part of what appears to be like a scrub brush sort of uh, forest. There are these stunted trees that are, some of them dead, some of them with, with leaves that are, seem to be dried and falling off. The mist and fog still thick, obscuring most of his visibility. But it's definitely a group of tents. All right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna whisper to Theo. There's a there's a bunch of tents up ahead. There's and, a bunch uh, of tents up, a set, up ahead. Yep, yep. A bunch of tents. Looks like a uh, like kind of like a like a camp. Probably the Dude, I, camp there, right? I can't see anything out of my own eyes. It's so weird. This is the coolest thing I've ever done. I yeah, I'm gonna go with it. Sure, um, gentlemen, are we proceeding? Theo, look at my eyes. Do are they like white? Do, do I have pupils still? Let's go. In situations like this, I never make eye contact. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> well played. Uh, you guys continue forward. And eventually you get to about 15 feet away from the first tent. And you can see that it appears to be flapping in the wind. It is torn and tattered. And you do not see any individuals. At the same time, Byron, assuming that you're still utilizing Chuck, he has scurried about the clearing and there are seven tents. All of them appear to be uninhabited, perhaps abandoned. They look to be in disarray. This place sucks. This place sucks, Theo. Yes, I'm not excited about it myself. It really does. Where's everyone else in relation to us, Theo? I don't know where. I can't see anything back there. I'm over here. Tanak is over there. (laughs) Oh, nice. Okay. Um, Maybe, uh, man. Maybe we should burn these tents. Do the do the radiance I don't thing. think we need to do anything to the tents yet. We should check inside them real quick to see if there's oh. anything that will let us know what's going on. Do a quick search. I agree. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull out of Chuck Vision and return to my body and let go of Theo. Chuck and I'm going to whistle once to, to let Chuck know where I am so he can come back to me. Okay. You guys uh, move forward to check out the tents. And once you're in the clearing, you can see that they are indeed abandoned. Poking your head into each one of the tents, you see that there's really nothing left. It it almost appears like this is a very similar encampment to the one that you burned at the, uh, the Knoll camp when you rescued the villagers during your battle with the, uh, the Knoll captain in his entourage, very similar, dirty, just filthy living conditions, uh, not much of any sort of fresh food or supplies. It looks as though no one's been here for some time. Are these, um, like, are, are, are these fabricated tents? 
Like, are they like canvas or whatever, or are they like a scrounged natural material structure? Uh, they are. They are canvas tents. Okay. Yep. Okay. Very similar to the ones that you saw at the at the Knoll Camp. Okay. There are crates that once held supplies. Maybe some of those crates have the remnants of like rotten fruit or fruit, you know, um, nuts or something like that. But there's just nothing here that's very useful. Broken barrels and debris and just a thick, thick mist that flows in and about this little clearing. Doesn't look like anyone's been here for some time. Hmm. You're, you're on mute, uh, Dig. I'd like to just peek inside the bigger tent to the north. Okay. Go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Uh, 12. There is a pallet, uh, a bedroll that looks tattered. There are bugs that are crawling over some of the debris that was left in this place as if being trying to be uh, returned to the earth below it. And there is a pile of rags. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's been here anytime recently. Am I seeing any tracks or anything like that around? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Roll a perception check. Someone want to help me look for tracks? Whereabouts um, are you looking specifically for tracks? Um, maybe around the fire. Um, and perhaps like to the south. Like we came into the from the west, right? Where we yep, were. You came in from the west. Yep. I guess if I can perceive the water in a certain direction, like maybe that direction. You can definitely hear the water crash into the south and to the east of where you are. Okay, so yeah, I would, would want to look for tracks in that direction. Okay. Theo will yeah, turn on ahead. the Eldritch site while that's happening. Okay, go ahead and roll a uh, perception check, Runar, and if somebody's helping you, you can roll it with advantage. Oh, yeah, I'll help look around for tracks. Okay. Perception? Yes, sir. Or survival, your choice. It's the same for me, so I'll, I'm going to roll survival. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Natural very twice. nice. Yeah, you instantly notice that there are tracks. There are <sighs> what appear to be knoll tracks. You've seen them now before when you when you uh, snuck your way into the bandit cap, the knoll bandit cap before, and you see that there are dozens of sets of tracks that crisscross this area around the campfire area from the tents between the tents and that leads south in this uh, let's see in this general direction whoops there we go this is, this is more than we faced the number of tracks i mean he said dozens there's just tracks like everywhere. Yeah, it's hard it to tell. Like it's really hard to tell how many individuals, right. but a lot of a lot of activity was in this area. And then there is a distinct path to the south. I see. We follow the path. I uh, wish I couldn't agree, but I do. Uh, does Eldritch Sight reveal anything uh, magic detectable uh, nearby, within sixty feet, rather? Um. I will say from where you are right there, and given that there is a thick fog, that you do not pick up anything other than what might be on the, the bodies, on the persons of your friends. Are you saying they're undead? It's just bodies? Do I have to kill my whole party and take their magic items? Yep. <laughs> Come get some. Try it, punk. Runar's got glowing boots. He's like day glow. He's got a... So Runar's like a fucking lantern. <laughs> I have a green lantern thing going on. That's that's all I wanted to ask. We're good. Um, while they're doing that, I'm just gonna go over to the nearest sh sh tattered tent and just cut five pieces of cloth off it and just stuff them into my bag. All right, which tent? 
Um, I'll do the south tent, the one I'm standing right next to. Okay. Yeah, you can easily cut a few pieces of fabric from the tent, no problem. I might need these later. For what? I don't know. Uh, lighter? Let us continue. Let's start yeah, fire. let's move. Byron and Runar, as you guys begin to walk south, following the tracks with Runar in the lead, you hear some, some laughing from behind you. And you hear, but don't end up seeing anything, you hear like the flaps of wings. <laughs> oh, and it just kind of disappears to the north into the mists. I love Come party. back here and laugh. I dare you. I dare you. Whoa. What are you yelling Whoa. at? Byron. I don't know. Whoa. I heard laughter. You guys didn't hear that? <laughs> Not immediately, no. no. Oh, my bad, guys. I swear I heard some laughter. I was just gonna, I was trying to, you know, maybe draw them out, coax them over. That's what I thought. Run away. Ha ha ha. So you guys head south. Yep. Following the track. All right. Let me grab your tokens here real quick. Do it. Grab them. I'll grab everybody's tokens. Just the funny thing about my token. Oh. Ah, uh, never mind. Your hands off my token. So you guys find yourselves uh, walking south, and as you do. You see that there are a, there's a set of ladders as you emerge and you can start to see the edge of the coastline right here. Mm -hmm. There is a cliff that drops down to a small plat platform, a little rocky outcrop here. And you can see that there is some rickety, poorly built ladders that descend. And the trail that you're following, Runar, with that epic survival roll continues south. But there is a trail that goes to that ladder as well. Oh, a crossroads. What do you make um, of this? Some ladders heading down or a trail to the south? I always read if you're in a maze, you should always go left. I'd rather not give up the high ground if we're not alone in here. Yeah, I agree. I said we tip the ladders over so nothing can come up. What happens if we need to go down there? But we yeah, leave the ladders. Let's just we can pull a ladder up. Then. Leave the always, ladders. Take the cannoli. We can always come back if it's just the wrong way. I go for a cannoli. I love cannoli. Yeah. Mm. All right, let's go south. Keeland cannoli. Are you it's guys going to continue south? Yeah. It really is. Oh, yep. Ben and Jerry's cannoli ice cream. Oh, no, boy. I've never heard of it, but it sounds amazing. Um, well. All right. You guys find yourself now approaching the another set of cliffs, and you can hear the ocean water louder as it's crashing. There also appears, as you move farther south, to be a cave entrance. And about the cave this? entrance are skeletons of uh, bone piles. Are they human? Uh, roll an investigation check. Or no. Or other. Oh, I still had advantage on six. Or both. Um, there, it's hard to tell, but you definitely see that many of them are humanoid, possibly human, um, maybe some gnolls, but there's a lot of the bones are also disarticulated. So it's just like random piles of bones that have been pulled apart. Um, if only we they had have not been arranged in any particular way, but they certainly, uh, they certainly are piled up at the entrance to what appears to be a cave of some kind. You know, I'm going to move over to one of the bones and I'm going to pull up, like inspect one of the skeletons with a medicine check to see if I can dis 
concern how it died. Mm, okay. Oh. Some fucking... Some Dr. Dr. Mick killing gutty. Some bones. Some, some... You pick up a femur, right? And you look at it and it just looks like something was gnawing on it. Maybe mice. Uh, you drop it, you look down and there's like a radius that you pull up and it's broken in half. Um, some of them look to be as though there were uh, slashing blows to some of them. Some of them look like they were snapped. It's kind of a hodgepodge. Okay. Well, I picked up this arm bone, guys. And, it, and it, you know, I think it's, I think we're, I think there's a lot of mice in this cave. Call me crazy, but this looks like an animal den of some sort, right? Yep. An yep. animal den, or perhaps where the gnolls are dwelling. Yep, maybe gnawing, and maybe maybe slashing damage. Did, did, maybe. Let me take a look here. Yeah, Dan, have you ever seen anything like this? Is this Dan like Darius a normal down and looks. tree? Um, The one that's right in front of you? Yeah. Roll a nature I feel check. Like, I feel like the other trees that we've seen have been, like, stunted, right? I think mm. you described mm -hmm. them as. Yep. And Some this of them one, are, appear dead. Some yeah. of them appear to have, you know, like sparse growth upon them. It doesn't seem yeah. to be any different than what you've seen. Okay. Yep. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't stand out to you. Okay. But Dan Virius kneels down and, and as he gets closer to the entrance of the cave, he just kind of turns his head in disgust and says, Quakey, it stinks like death in there. Yeah, that is probably, probably, probably because death. of these, it's probably because of all these dead bodies. So, do we go in here after the gnolls or go see what was down the ladders? I'm thinking let's check the ladders. I like caves. Let's go in the cave. Someone want to peek in? We could close the cave. How do you propose to close a cave? You use sickening radiance. <laughs> you really want him to do that, don't you? I do. It was so awesome <laughs> last time he did it. We could throw a torch in, see what happens, but not go in there. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, smoke them out. Which would alert any guards to our presence. That's true. Oh. How big is this cave? You want to take a look? Like on the outside, not on the inside. Oh, so it's probably about... I should say the cave entrance. How big is the, the cave? The cave entrance is probably... You'd have to uh, a normal sized human, so not a halfling necessarily, but a human about six foot or whatever would need to sort of duck down to get inside okay. of it. But not okay. get down on your hands and knees or anything like that, but you'd have to crouch down a little bit to get inside. Yep. But without actually looking in there, it's hard to tell if you'd be able to stand upright or if it would get narrower or what. You just know that the entrance you could you as as a halfling tenna could walk into it without having to crouch or anything like that. All right, you're right. You're right, Theo. Let's not go in there. Well, let's not go in there. Maybe down the cliffs is a back entrance. Is this trail? Does the does the trail lead to the cave? It does. Oh, all the foot traffic. Mm-hmm. You know, if we go up on top of the cave and. Combine our strength, we might be able to cave in the entrance. We don't know where it goes. It goes to we a could bunch try of to death. Upside down, various. Sometimes it is wise to display deterrence on the outside of one's territory. Uh, the the Zanzaran were that way. Perhaps this is their deterrent. Or as they starved to death, they just threw them out of the cave so they wouldn't stink up the inside. I mean, we can't tell like that an, they were like eaten or anything, right? Well, some of them look not on. So, so, so he not specifically off. said some of them look like no. they've been eaten by on. like by like mice or something. I thought he said. Well, I said mice, but I mean, gnolls are like really big mice, so with hyena know. faces, I don't know. <laughs> Well, the, I don't know. The trail leads down this way. I said we check it out. 
I agree. Let's go check that trail. All right. Should we leave a message for them in case anything tries to sneak out this way and come behind us? Maybe, maybe Tenok, you could do one of those things that you do with the rope. Yeah, I'll come over here and pee on these bones. <laughs> that is fair. I was, I was thinking like a <laughs> snare, but that works. <laughs> torches or no torches? Um, I think torches will just get in the way of the ladder. I'm going to put my helmet on. Oh, we're not going to go into the... Oh, wait. Are we going to... I'm getting mixed messages here. I thought, I thought we were going we were into going the cave. The, I thought we were going back to the We were ladder. going to the ladder. Oh, I thought we were going to the cave. In the cave. Oh, wow. We're all messed up. Um, yeah. Okay. So, well, then we need to clear that up. My yeah. recommendation is the ladder. Everybody who wants to go in the cave, raise your hand. Let's do it that way. Wait, you want to go in the cave, Byron? I thought you didn't want yeah. to go in the cave. <laughs> I don't that's, like ladders. That's three to two. <laughs> well, I mean... The there cave were, it there is. Was, there's trails going both ways. Yeah. Yep. It's very Tenoch, confusing. You, you should go first, Tanak, because you're short. And you we don't, won't have to duck. Runar will go first. Yeah, he can see in the dark better than I can. Oh... Uh, Touche. Don't send your wizard right. in a cave so first. Do you want to? Do you want to <laughs> go hands and knees, or do you want us like do the crouching, hurt my back, hunch over thing? Wait, hey, why don't you send Chuck in there? How tall are you, by Hey, the way? I'll send Chuck in. All right. Uh, and then I'll and I'll immediately like <laughs> blink my eyes once, and I don't know if I have pupils anymore or not, but I'll be like. Kind of like wavy, like my hands will suddenly go out and be like, guys, I can't see anything. I can't see anything, guys. Like, I'm just floating here. Somebody catch me. And I'm just going to do the salmon. I'm going to do the Byron's salmon. Byron's gone cross eyed again. <laughs> Doing the salmon thing. Theo is going to take Byron's hand and put it on Runar's shoulder. Okay, sick. All right, so you send, you send Chuck. Your 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 baboon familiar into this cavern that is the entrance adorned with piles of bones, and uh, we're gonna find out what the baboon sees when we come back from a little bio break. So yes. let's take let's take a couple minutes and get some refreshments and that do what we need baboon. to do for ourselves, and then we'll come back and see what happens to Chuck. Sweet, <laughs> right? <Righteous. laughs> we'll, we'll be back. We, we forget should. there's a familiar on the team now. I, I mean, there's we've had two of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We've you've had one for a while, but we'll come back in just a minute. Bye.
All right, we are back. And I have a question for you, Kirk, Byron, Mr. Byron Hearn. I have an answer for you. You've sent Chuck, your baboon, your tiny baboon familiar, into this dark, dank cave. Mm -hmm. Does Chuck have night vision? Or dark vision, I should say. No. As he goes in there and you start to see through his eyes, it is pitch black. There is no light whatsoever inside the cave. Well, this was a bad idea. Um, <laughs> Pull him back out then if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to whistle once and I'm going to give myself my own vision back. And let go of Runar's shoulder and be like, Come on, come on, Chuck. And have Chuck run back out. Can I make out the water behind me? Like, I see what uh, I see yes. on the map, but can Rudy yep. see that? Uh, roughly. I mean, it's you can see about 15 feet from where you are. I just kind of blocked off the map in chunks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you get to the edge, you can see about 15 feet. And it is about 30, 35 feet to the water below. And it is crashing against the rocks below. Can I perceive anything? Like, can I see anything in the water? Uh, roll a perception check as you look down. Like those... Is that a fence? <laughs> roll, you can roll giant. a perception check as well, Tanok. You seem to be kind of looking over the edge. A giant fence. 13. Nope. The waves are crashing pretty pretty hard. It doesn't look like it on the map necessarily, but there are waves that are rolling in and smashing up against the cliff face, and there's ocean spray uh, that flies up into your faces. It's really hard to make out what's below. But Runar, or you do think that you make out possibly some sort of a structure. Really difficult to say. Again, it is it is foggy as hell. <laughs> there might be something down there in the water. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe. All right, it's now or never. It's go time. What do you guys think? Uh, We're going I in. Think, I think we need some torches. I got this. Yeah, Pull we need light. I got dark vision with my helmet. I could. Dark vision isn't. I'll see in dark vision. Torch. Yeah. Torch. Theo right. has a torch. Okay. Righteous. We got a torch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Theo's got a torch. Just one torch. I'll have a torch. Okay. All right. One of you in the front, one of you in the back. This is a free country, my friend. I'll go where I want to. I just, well, I was just thinking for the light purposes. I got freedoms. I'll be in the I'll, back. I'll go in the front. Away from Sweet. the freedom, man. I'll go, Let's I'll see. go in first. I'll be in the middle. And it's light. Of course, I got to figure out the the light thing again. Light. Camera. Uh, bum bum! It's a miracle. So a torch gives off twenty feet low and twenty feet bright. Is that correct? Well, yeah, uh, yeah, twenty feet of 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 bright of of like full light and and then another 20 feet of dim light essentially yeah hmm. 40 total feet of illumination token layer so he's on the token layer he's on the token layer why Your isn't the torch layer why isn't the torch emitting light chad any ideas layer maybe I would say because roll twenty is weird. Um, I, that's a thing I always have struggled with is getting light. I it it might just be it. Uh, yeah, I I have gone to when I was still using roll twenty, giving the person. Can you give the person with the torch create illumination? You should be able to do that. 
if it works, I guess, theoretically. Well, so like Theo has dark vision, so he he's able to see right. without a torch. Uh, Runar works. is able to see because he's got his helmet on. But Byron, for example, well, maybe Byron can see. Yep. Okay, it's working. Is it working? All right, sweet. It is. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so. Here we go. We're going to do this. It's so technical. You, you guys are going into the cave. What is the marching order for the cave? I'm going to move you guys into it, and then I'm going to, I'm going to bring you over to the cave map. Runar's in the front. Behind okay, him is my character, Theo. Okay, with a torch. <laughs> I believe and then Byron. I was going to say Dan Various. Well, you wanted to be in the middle. Oh, yeah, Darius. I do. Yep. Yeah, me and yeah, then, then you Darius. and then and then me and then Dan Various. Oh, right, nice. Good. Yeah. Make Dan As Darius you guys there. enter into this cave, your first thing you're going to notice is that it, it's going to get extremely crowded. You are able to stand up in this area that you're in for the moment. Let's see. There we go. There is a path that heads to the left and a path that heads to the right. Can you guys see what I'm talking about? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, which one the one, which? The, the path to the left, just to give you a little bit of a feel for this, uh, has some webbing stretched across it that you can see on the map. And you can see just far enough in the interior here. There is no fog, by the way. The fog is not penetrated very far beyond the entrance to the cave. But that that uh, right fork, it appears as though it drops down five feet onto a platform right here. And then beyond that, you can see that there is what appears to be some sort of a water, a brackish water. Uh, Runar, what do you see for, uh, tracks, markings? Yeah. Can I make a check for that? Absolutely. Go ahead and roll a survival check. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, Not bad. Uh, there are tracks and they go in both directions. There appear to be uh, a set of uh, a pretty worn path. That, and the only way you can really tell that there's a path is that the skeletons that were once piled up, it looks like someone pushed through the skeletons and sort of broke through like a wall of bones and pushed them to the sides of this cavern. And they are, you can see that they're pushed to the side and also trampled on. So you can see that there is a path that goes through the skeletons in either direction. Neither one of them being necessarily more traveled than the other. It looks like it goes both ways. A lot of traffic in here, though. Does one direction smell like gold? One doesn't have a bunch of water in it. So. I mean, I can swim through that, but it looks kind of gross. Can we tell how big a pool of the water that is from here? Uh, if you if there. you approach it, you could take a better look. From where you are now, you can't really see too well. I'll scooch around and and hop down there. Okay, so you drop down five feet, and there are still skeletons that are sort of pushed up against the walls. And as you get closer, you see that this fork in the path ends at this pool. But you can oh. see that the pathway leads to the pool. How piled up are these skeletons? Are uh, we talking like, you know, like 300 like stacks of bodies at the mouth of the pass? They were jammed. It looks like they were jammed into the entrance of this cave. And then whatever went into the cave pushed them through and kind of blew them into these hallways. Um, there are... Okay. From your perspective, a lot of bones. All right, well, then. It ends with the water down here. I'm just climbing There's up. a path under the water. It could be. All right. We could have something well, like... Uh, I'm not going swimming in that. that is You've got disgusting. a fish helm. Yeah, I it could look. It horrible. I'm... Uh, no. Nope. No thanks. Oh, 
while I was down there, could I have been able to tell if it was seawater? Um, how would you know? Tell me how you might know. By maybe like the smell or sure, you dip your dip your hand into it, or do you just smell it like just kind of give it just a nose? Yeah. Uh, it does. It definitely smells like decay in here. That's the most Mm -hmm. overpowering odor. But you do get a sense of like a saltiness, like brackish, Mm -hmm. stagnant water. If you've ever been in like a bog and you've smelt like water that's been sitting for a long time with decomposition happening, kind of smells like that. So there's no kind of, in a sense. There's no kind of movement to it or any kind of perceptible waves or flow or anything like that. Um, roll a perception check. Or is it just like a flat pool? Twenty. Nice. You do not detect a single ripple. <clears throat> it is dead still. I'm gonna hop back up. I think that was their toilet. <laughs> it stinks. It's not moving. I say we try this high ground over here. Yeah, yep, yep. Yep. All right. I'll move start moving around this corner. I'll, All right. I'll our- signal Theo to go next. And Theo, you're you've got the torch. Um Runar, you you make your way up to about where you are now, maybe five feet more, and there are pretty thick webbing. Uh, spider webs that crisscross in front of you, kind of blocking your path. They're not they're not as thick as you've seen in some places, but nevertheless, they are thick and you'll have to go through them. Not as thick as certain ships. Not Can as I... thick as the uh, <laughs> the Emperor of Waves, for example. All right. Um, can I use, uh, can I pull a scimitar and like hack through them? Sure. Are they like yeah, easy enough like that? No, and it's okay. it's nothing like the the weird green webbing from the Pinara ruins or anything like that. Okay. It's just right. spider webs, and you're you're able to cut through it. I mean, they stick to your blade, and you have to like clean mm-hmm. the blade off. But you're able to hack through, and just kind of use that to to brush the the webs down, and as you continue forward. And what happens is, as you get up to about right here, you can see that the anyone gonna it gets follow? super narrow. Yeah, are you guys going to follow him? Yep, I'll be right behind. There is a narrow, narrow little area where you could potentially sneak through. You'd have to you'd have to try to sneak through if you wanted to, but you look inside from the flicker of the flames that you can see more skeletons strewn about. I can't move my guy. I can select him, but I can't move. Him. Oh, maybe you were stuck on the. You might have been stuck on the edge there. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Yep. How's it look up there, fellas? It narrows. Awful. I don't awful. absolutely. So, Dave, awful. a person could potentially wiggle through there. You could try. Like, can I see that it gets wider again? You can. Yeah, you can peer through this narrow bottleneck and beyond. You can see that it opens up into a, a larger cavern uh, than you've seen before. But you also see as you peer through that there are more skeletons strewn about, bones scattered and littered across the stone floor of this cave system. Can I perceive any more tracks leading into this room, this area? Roll another survival check. Number 13. You do see tracks, but it also looks as though um, there aren't as many tracks as you look just beyond the bottleneck, as if some individuals may have walked in this far and turned back. Hmm. I don't know. It looks like a bit of a dead end. It does open up in there again, and I can see more bones. We should check everything if we're going to look into this. Yeah, we made it this far. This sucks, but... You know, do we all need to go in here, though? Let's just send one person ahead, and if it dead ends, we'll just turn around. Can your monkey carry a torch? Uh, you know, I can, but I mean, I just, knowing him, it's just going to end up turning into something that's not good. You're not going to want to touch it again. <laughs> I, I just don't trust him to carry it far enough. Um, how about you throw your torch in there? Throw your torch as far in there as you can. Trust me. 
All right, I'll, th I'll grab the... Theo, can we throw your torch? Once I'm done yelling at a familiar, yes, we can. <laughs> I throw my torch into Runar. Uh, roll a... Into Runar. Where, first of all, where do you want to throw it? And then roll a dexterity uh, torch attack roll, just to give us an idea of how how close you are. Mm-hmm. Okay. Runar, yeah. you're, you're um, <clears throat> muted. Sorry, uh, just up into this area so I can get a better idea what's up there. So yeah. that would whoever's going to do it. Yep, just a straight dex roll unless and no proficiency unless you're proficient in torch throwing. I am not. Oops, that's strength. So that you roll really good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need proficiency in torch throwing. You you <laughs> definitely get the torch into that space and it illuminates a quite large cavern perhaps 20 to 25 feet wide from where you can see it also indicates that there are more carcasses and skeletons than you thought at first glance there also appears to be some sort of perhaps cargo a few barrels maybe at the far end of what of what you can make out I with your line of sight those. I might, I'm going to like grab the field and like try and cool. ask a little bit. So I found all the treasure. If that's okay with you. Sure, go ahead. All right. And then I'm going to like reach out towards the fire, flip my wrist and close my fist. And I'm going to double its light output. Okay. Come again. You're using uh, control um, flame? Control flames, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so that doubles the torch out output? That's right. Yep, so it doubles the bright right light. Now. Ooh. Also, the Theo's going to go, I don't know how you learned to do that, but smart thinking. I should have, and he kind of makes a crooking gesture with his hand and casts Mage Hand so that he can have a hand in there, pick up the torch and be holding it. Because I just forget my con cantrips. Nice. Yeah, that would have worked. Yeah, you guys can see now that it it goes way back. So where do you want to put the torch? Yeah, move it up a little. How how far can you do your mage hand? Is it sixty feet. or one hundred and twenty? Okay. Thirty feet. So not much farther, but it's at least under control. Might be. Yeah, able you to could probably get, get it a little more. You could get it right. Um. You get it right here. I'll take it. Yeah. So as you guys do this, you can see that there is what appears to be a pile of bodies that have long since decayed. But even more importantly, there are boxes and crates and barrels uh, stacked against the walls. What appears to be a pretty sizable interior cavern. And you can make out in the flicker of the light, there is a chest at the far end that appears to be filled with, let's see, can you see all the way back there? Hopes and dreams. <laughs> Actually, you really can't. You can only see a sliver. High school diploma. <laughs> high school diploma. Just shiny. You can see the shiny stuff from I here. think from, from the way that I'm seeing the map from you guys, you can really only see it like that. Is yeah, that I correct? Can, yeah, yes. Yep, so you see barrels, crates. Oh, I can't even see that. Yep, okay, from where you are, you can't see it. But Runar, you probably can see it like that. Yeah. Yep, all the way back to your arrow. Yep, those bodies back there. Yep, and let's see. Uh, yeah, Theo, can see you this. can see... Yeah, you can see a little bit more. You can see this right here, is that correct? Give or take, yeah. Dan Virus can't really see much. Yeah, I can only see this busted right. ass barrel yep. and then the crate. So you can see whatever you, whatever your uh, characters can see with the vision. That's what you can see. Some of you can see this right here. Some of you can see this line of crates and barrels. Not a sponsor of our stream, but we're, we're interested. And then you see a bunch of uh, skeletons and bones strewn about the center of this cavern. Theo just sighs deeply. 
goes, I'm going to regret saying the following statement out, line, out loud. There is definitely a chest full of coins at the far side of the enormous cave full of bodies. So it's probably a trap. But there's still say, gold there. Maybe... We could have just found the back door to their stash. Right? And their stash is just a whole bunch of bodies? Well... I mean, that's no that's possible. Trophies, perhaps. They were, they were starving here. Um, I remember a story in my youth of two large cats who would kill villagers. And, All right, that's it. I'm Carl. And, and keep them, <laughs> keep them in their cave. The I ghost. Got a, I got a real bad feeling about this. They were you, really. You dangerous. say that every time. Oh, this is a trap. This is definitely a trap. Runar, you're going in. You want to go in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's do it. I'm going to start <laughs> shipping it. Yes, yes, I want to go up. in there. Like, no, but yep. yes. All right. Play D&D, boys. All right. Uh, roll. Everybody who's going to go in, as you do, roll a dexterity. Um, let's just do a dexterity check as you work your way through this narrow part. Runar, why don't you start? Does this include people who are halflings? 14. You have advantage. Nice. Uh, 14, you easily make it through and step out to right about here at the torch. Okay. And there's a spectral hand holding it in front of you. Uh, I see Theo. He's in behind him. Yep. Oh, God. Roll the shimmy. <laughs> Give me a shimmy roll. Oh! For some reason, I don't know why, Theo, you tell me, you kind of get hung up a little bit. Theo's wearing a smoldering breastplate. You can't really compress those things. That's it right there. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of lodged in there, guys. Uh, um, no I'm, fat jokes. Gonna, I have a crowbar. I'm going to run and just body slam to try and <laughs> push him all the way through. And then all right, roll stuck. a shove attack. That's uh, just strength, right? Yeah. It's uh, strength athletics. 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 Yep. Okay, it is athletics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you just hear this. And he pops through to the other side. Sweet. <laughs> oh. All right, now, now I'll slide through. Hey, there's a pool yeah. of water here, boys. Yeah, as you pass through, you look to your right, and that you can see that, that green water again, Runar and Theo. Mm. Uh, Byron, go ahead and roll. Okay, yeah, you easily make it through. Getting up into here. Tenok, you have advantage. Actually, you don't even need to roll. You're so small, you make it right through. Sweet. <laughs> it's like a normal door for him. Doop, 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 doop. Yep, just a hallway. Damn long shanks. He has less trouble getting through this than he does a bar door. Dan Virius is fine. Rolled a 19. So he'll be in the back here. Now that you've entered into this chamber, you can see that it must have been some sort of a stash, a, um, a cache of supplies, perhaps, as there are barrels and chests that line the walls. And indeed, just as Theo mentioned, there is a chest at the far end that is uh, open and seems to be heaping and overflowing with gold. Theo's going to turn on Detect Magic. Making nope, his nope, eyes nope, bright nope. blue. With all the bodies, though. Good. Um, okay, so you detect magic. Let's see here. You do... You do detect um, that there is some magic emanating from the pile of bodies at various locations. Possibly three different locations, from what you can tell. There's and it's either. small. It's not like a broad area. They're kind of like uh, very acute locations within the pile. But this pile here, just to give you an idea, um, the pile that's right here is probably about three feet tall. Um, I'm going to look up. Can I see the cave roof or any yes. other holes or ways into this place? Uh, roll a perception check. You definitely see the, the ceiling of the cavern, and it is rocky, and there are stalactites that hang down at various locations. 
11. You do not see any sort of like um, like holes that lead up or any light sources that shine down. Fellas, what are we doing in here? This is nice. sketchy as hell. And there, there are... Sorry, go ahead, Thea. There are three magical sig signatures in those piles of bones. Something could out. be in there. Um, no, because the, some of those body parts look more than 10 pounds. They're bones. Just pull them off. Hold on. Let me try this. Theo will use Mage Hand to start trying to shove things out of the way and toss them aside in the nearest pile to kind of go down to wherever the magic thing is. Yeah, you can you can do that. So you get to work. It, it takes some time because you're digging through. You're pulling. Some of the bones are too heavy, but most of them you can just pull up. Some of them are jammed in there, so they're hard to get out. It's not that they're heavy, but that the weight of other bones that have been sitting on top of them are heavier than 10 pounds. But many of them you can pull with your mage hand and toss to the side. And you're working on getting down to one of the magical, um, one of the pings of magic that you detected. Absolutely. It'll take you a little time, but you can do it. The rest of you just kind of wait while that happens, or do you want to do anything else? Um, while while that's happening, I'm gonna look back at at Dan Various. Like Dan Various. Yeah. Uh, do you see that? What is it that, that glowing chest over there? Of money. Yeah, I do. It's pretty obvious. Do you think that's a trap? Absolutely. Do you think you could get away from a trap if you triggered it? Absolutely not. Do you think if we together went up there together, we could figure out the trap mechanism before it triggered on us? I'll tell you what, Hearn. Uh, I'm not here to to go trap sleuthing, but I, I will cover your ass if you uh, decide that's what you want to do. Righteous. Let's do it. But sneaky. We have to be stealthy. To be clear, I'm not going up to that thing to set it off. No, 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 no. I'm going to go first. You're going to be right behind me. Yeah, that's the part that I'm not so sure about. You don't, You just said you'd cover my ass. Well, I've got the bow here. That's kind of what I was thinking. But stay together. You got your fancy dagger, too. Keep your mind on your own dagger. My dagger's way cooler than yours. Yeah, I noticed. Um, so, ah, I'm sorry. No. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I I didn't quite catch what the Theo was doing. He was going after one of those. His mage hand is digging through the okay. pile of bones right now. <sighs> you know. I'll be watching this. Yeah, I think I'm just going to chill back until... Until Theo gets it, whatever the magic thing is out. Do uh, I'll look around, kind of around this pool of water that's here. Are mm -hmm. there? Do I detect any specifically looking for anything coming out of the water? Like okay. Tracks, tracks, or markings that would indicate something coming out of the water. Roll a survival check or investigation, whichever you prefer. I'm going to go with survival. Have you ever seen a mermaid? Nothing like that. How about a 21, <laughs> my friend? 21 is exceptional. You do not see anything that looks as though there is fresh movement into or out of this pool of water. It is a pretty narrow little um, seep, I guess. And it is filled with a just a gentle, um, motionless pool of kind of a green water mm -hmm. there's no splash marks or wet marks around the edge of it so it doesn't look like anything's gone in or out of it for a while but you can see that historically something has caused splashing to occur because you can tell from the sediment and the dust and the rocks around it that there has been some splashing in the past okay I will say uh, to my friends, uh, 
that perhaps we should step away from the water. What if you cast a snare on the water? Uh, Theo, as your hand uh, is going through this pile, it gets to a point where it's uncovered and you can see more of a glow that's not obstructed necessarily by the pile of bones on top of it. And it appears to be from your perspective, you're about 10, 15 feet away, but you can see that it's, it appears to be maybe like a potion of some kind. Theo will attempt to get his mage hand on mage potion and mage lift. By the way, you can make anything cooler by adding mage to it. Mm. Hmm. Mage, roll me a mage die. Uh, that would be a uh, dexterity check for your mage hand. <laughs> that did work, too. Ten. It can't seem to get it. It's, it must be wedged under something. One second. I have to step a, a step away. Continue. Byron, Tenok, Runar. Uh, um, I think we should. I think we should Jenko this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should go in here and check it out. I want to look yeah. for. I want to look for shit. Like, I'm going to move up and start looking around too. See if we can okay. see any other entrances. Yeah, screw it. Or exits. I'm just going to go straight to the mage hand and try and grab whatever potion it was going for. All right. Yeah. Easy enough. You, you pull up the, um, you pull up the potion and it's definitely in, in a small vial and it looks to be like a reddish pinkish potion. Tenok, what are you looking at? I'm just, uh, looking around the walls, the ceiling, um, looking for any, Exits, entrances. Okay. That and then, sort of thing. So mostly just around where your token is, or are you doing like a full scan of the entire area? Yeah, I mean, I guess I I would, um, I would, uh, you know, I would get up to maybe here, depending on where other people are. I don't know that I want to go too far without being close-ish, but I would, I would move a, a bit forward, yeah. All right, so where you are right there, you look at these barrels and you can see that they are old wine barrels. They look to be uh, extremely old. The wood on them is deteriorated in some spots. The It is pulled apart from the, um, oh, what's that? What's the metal band around a barrel called? I can't remember. Um, Cooper? Yeah, whatever that hooping, it's it seems to have like almost shrunken or contracted from possibly from not having any moisture. Mm -hmm. You also notice that the walls in here and the ceiling, this appears to be some sort of a cavern that was perhaps made by water, erosion from water being um, splashed into this cavern from time to time. But it doesn't look like there's been any sort of flooding in quite some time other than the small pools that you saw behind you. But okay. these three casks here appear to be, have either been emptied by the visitors to this cave or have just um, evaporated th over time. Hmm. Okay. I don't notice, and I don't notice any hidden entrances, exits, that sort of thing. Not to where you are. I mean, you, you, you're only looking at a certain portion of right. the entire place. So this whole area kind of along here, above you and around you, along the walls, you really didn't see anything that stood okay. out. All right, who's next? What else you got? Runar? You might You're be muted. I don't know. You mute, buddy. buddy. God, that's damn, that's like four that times this session. I know. It's been two weeks since mm -hmm. we played. We all um, forgot what we're doing. You used Take, your mic last week. Taking care not to disturb the bones. I'm going to come around Tenok and check out this chest over here. Okay. Uh, you look at the chest. It appears to be locked. Okay. Um, do I see... I'm going to get a good look at that treasure now. Um, 
Can I see from here if there's like any kind of markings that I recognize on either this chest next to me or on these crates around in the area? Um, roll an investigation check. Thirteen. You don't see any markings of like ownership or any sort of like uh, notation of maybe the origins or the destination of this cargo. This chest looks extremely old as though it's been in this cavern for a long time. Very similar to the barrels. The, the wood is sort of shrunken and deteriorated in some parts. The fasteners have sort of um, pulled apart. And even though it's locked, you get the sense that it's kind of a brittle chest. Did I try to open it even though it's locked? Sure. You're just going to try to force it open? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Roll a uh, strength athletics check. Twenty-five. Oh yeah, easily. You you rip it open and the lock just stays in place and the the lid of it just pulls apart and you just hear this. Everybody hears this echo in the in the cavern of wood crushing and, and snapping, and you pop it open and you look inside. Yep. And roll a D eight for me. Two. There is, there are a bunch of tapestries, uh, cloth, silks that seem to have been deteriorated somewhat, uh, perhaps moth eaten, perhaps um, molded. You also see sitting on top of these items is a sword, a scimitar covered in an ornamental gold plating. It seems to be some sort of a very fancy looking weapon. Oh, um. I'll pick that up. <laughs> Click. Okay. Weird. Never would have thought that was going to happen. Someone's got your number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's me. I've got it because it's cursed and I put it there. What about Byron? Um, you know, you've got the potion in your hand. I'm just going to stow it um, for now. Figure out what it is later. And I'm going to move over to these two chests over here. Okay. Very similar as you look at them. They are brittle, and uh, both of them have locks. Do I notice any trap mechanisms on either of them? Um, roll an investigation twice, please. One for each. Theo, while he's investigating these chests, what are you doing? Um, I think we're going to animate all the skeletons, because that will be an excellent addition to my army of undead. Wait, no, mm -hmm. everyone's watching. Uh, in that case, Theo will move a little bit further down towards Tanakh and um, begin going through the uh, the second pile to try and get to the other magical ping. He'll also take a look over at what um, uh, Runar found to see if that's magical, because it sounds magical. You have your magical detection eye still going, right? So you look over at Runar and he's holding this golden... Uh, pl plated scimitar and it does not give you any magical ping. Um, but you do see that there is what appears to be a second potion buried beneath some of the skeletons as you start digging for it. Going to continue using that mage hand just mage in case. Hand. Okay. Byron, uh, the the chest to the north is, does, is not trapped to your knowledge. The one to the south, however, does have a trap. But you, with your with your uh, skilled eye, can see that the trap is deteriorated and is no longer operational. It was it, it's a needle trap that uh, will not work anymore because it's so old and deteriorated. Sweet. Um, well, if I don't detect a trap on the one and the other one's not going to work, I'm just going to open them both. And okay. if they're locked, I'm going to pick them quick. They are both locked. All right. Slide a hand on both. Um, you have lockpicks tools. I have thieves proficiency. tools. Proficiency? Thieves yes. tools? That's what I meant. Yep. Yeah. So roll thieves tool proficiency with dexterity as your modifier. And do it twice, one for each. Wow. 26 and a 32. Holy what? shit. A 32? 
Just phone it in, bro. <laughs> oh my yeah, I get, god. I, I got double uh, proficiency bonus on thieves tools. Wow. Okay. Uh, in the northern chest of those two, roll me a d20 and a d10. A two and a one. <laughs> okay. Great. Great. Yep. <laughs> so <More> tapestries. <laughs> you find um, awesome. there are a, this one isn't filled with tapestries on the north. It's actually <laughs> filled with um, with boxes. And you open a couple of the boxes, and it appears as though there were some sort of um, some vegetative matter in one or two of the boxes that has turned to dust. You just kind of look in there and it's just dusty as you open it. <coughs> kind of makes you cough a little bit. But you do open a second box that has a little bit more of an ornate nature to the, the housing. Um, a little bit of gold inlay. It looks to be like a valuable box and you pop it open. And inside is an exquisite calligrapher set. And in a box next to it, is a marble you open it up there's a marble dragon chess set with bronze plane pieces oh shit we can play the good game joe Dude, all right sweet. all right um you know i'm gonna put it all pack it all away um was there just a couple boxes in the one was it just the one box or an eight uh, just the one box. Well, the two boxes were ornate. There was the box of calligrapher set and then the um, dragon chest set. But the yep. box to the south, I'd like you to roll two D8s, please. A 12, a four, and an eight. All right. <laughs> you also find a scimitar. This one with inlaid gems in the blade doesn't look that useful in terms of an actual weapon, but it looks quite beautiful. Definitely an ornamental piece. I like it. I'm taking it too. Runar you also you also find another box um, that has a medium-sized statuette of a sparrow. And the sparrow is, is forged out of platinum. And it has uh, some green gems for eyes. That's the new math size. Iron, you writing all this down? <laughs> it's not life size. It's probably like the size of maybe like um, like a cantaloupe yeah. size. Right. Oh jeez, <laughs> it's pretty big. Whoa. That's a lot of platinum. Mm hmm. It looks very valuable. Dan Virius kind of moves up and he's like, there's lots in here. Uh, yeah, I wonder why. Um, because well, it got nobody who's come out. to find it has survived. And I'll point at the pile of bones and I'll be like, obviously. God, Dan Virius, sometimes you're so dense. Well, you know, this, some of this treasure could be <laughs> cursed. Theo says moving bones with his mage hand. Yeah, right. Theo, you Don't... make it to the second potion after after a time, and it is uh, indeed magical as as the mage hand lifts it and brings it to you. It is a a reddish liquid. It looks to you you've seen many of these now. It looks to be a uh, um, a healing potion, a common healing potion. I'm assuming the other one was also a common healing potion. Or would I just should I just put potion? Yeah, you would probably you'd probably know that at this point. Just I mean, it's not labeled. But you know, you get a vibe. Cool. It's Unput it's vibing for you. Theo, does your eye pick up anything on this chest of gold up here? Look over at the chest of gold. I do not believe it was rating anything magical. It was not. It no. What would you like to do next, fellas? I'd like Theo's to go gonna up. go after the third potion. Or the third glowy thing, which I'm assuming yep. at this point adds characters as a player's a potion. Yeah, you're able to uncover it as a uh, a third healing potion, common healing potion. 
Uh, Tenok and Runar move forward up into the corner. You see another pile of bones back in this corner, tucked up against there. Uh, there just seems to be bones everywhere, broken barrels, broken chests. You start to, um, you, you, well, this one here is uncovered behind you, Tenok, and you look in there and it appears as though there was some sort of food or something that has turned to almost like a leather. Mm. Perhaps it was dried meats at one point, but now it just looks like fruit leather, leather hides. Could be fruit leathers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's uh, thirty-year-old fruit roll-ups. Those would still be good. <laughs> the, yeah, they, right. they still Those work. Probably still would be. <laughs> All right, not touching the gold. I'd like to go up and kind of investigate this um, chest. Touch it. Uh, the chest that the gold is in, or the chest next to it? The chest that the I don't want to be like right on top of it. Oh, implying sure. Implying that I'm touching yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, you can look at the so, chest. Go ahead and just, roll an investigation check. All right. Reach your hand in. Taste it. Taste the rainbow. Ten. <laughs> the chest looks to be a chest uh, filled with gold. There's nothing that, like, gives it any sort of insignia or you know, an appellation or an origin to it. Um, it looks to be a simple chest, although it is cocked open and filled with gold. Does it have a Rocky Mountain? I don't think so. I mean, if it doesn't have an appellation, maybe it has a Rocky Mountain. <laughs> appellation, <laughs> you monster. <laughs> All right. Just still super wary of it. I'm just going to step to the side and kind of... Um, Keep going through some of these other crates to see. Sure. Yeah, you got you see. you start breaking open some of these other crates and popping them open with your crowbar, and uh, you find various items that look to be supplies of foodstuffs. Uh, there's a couple of broken casks over in the corner here that once had wine in them. Um, let's see. Everybody, roll me a d20. We'll see what else we find here. Runar. Eat. You find a box full of books. Ooh. They appear to be they appear to be novels. They appear to be um, travel uh, journals. They appear to be sort of like popular texts. They don't look to be like um, tomes of magic or anything like that. It looks like to be like a supply of books that maybe were headed to a port for sale. Rick Steve's um, guide to the flyers. Theo needs that, and Theo rolled a five. Theo, <laughs> you find a dulcimer in one of the crates. You you pop open the the chest, and there's just it's this beautiful dulcimer that was uh, set in this like felt housing to keep it protected. It's quite beautiful. Tenok, you rolled. What did you roll? Five. Tenok. <laughs> Tanak, you find a crate that's full of uh, pelts. They look to be perhaps wolf pelts, tiger pelts, um, cheetah pelts. You recognize some of the some of the um, species, perhaps, uh, but they are all in really bad condition, moth-eaten and decayed, as if they've been sitting in here for a long time. And Byron, what'd you roll? I rolled a one. You pop open one of the crates and you find what appear to be uh, sketches and drawings on rolled parchment. But amongst the, the sketches and drawings, there is a framed portrait of a very beautiful woman. It is a painting that is about two feet tall and about a foot and a half wide. Wow. And it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. It is. It's just this beautiful, beautiful woman. Um, and the sketches, are those like uh, devices? Uh, other nope, they are sketches of people. Things? Yep, they're like unfinished paintings, maybe um, practice drawings and sketches that you might find of someone studying different forms and poses. You know, I, I like that. I think I'm going to take a bunch of them and just kind of open up my journal and kind of stuff some of them inside of my journal just to like look at later 
just to keep them good enough. Not obviously getting all crumpled up in my bag. Yeah, easily enough. And at this point, you've gone through pretty much all of the uh, the chests and crates. Uh, The only thing left is the chest full of gold. Yeah, let's leave it. Let's have a little powwow about this. So I have like six ideas for this, guys. And ultimately, we need to figure out what's going on here, and we can come back later. Theo is kind of just standing in place, turning around, looking around. So here's the thought I had. We just leave with everything we have. Leave all this gold? I just... Well, okay, I'll take a step forward. I'll look at the chest. Do I see any trap mechanisms? And I'll do an investigation check. Sure, roll an investigation. Sixteen. You examine the chest. You look at the chest very closely, and it does not appear to be uh, trapped. So here's There's the no difference. mechanism whatsoever. Does the, so, does, does the chest look travel worthy like could it be picked up and carried or is it like um you looked at the chest earlier didn't you yeah um with your investigation i don't remember what you rolled but yeah it looks like the others it looks it looks uh weak it looks battered uh not battered but um like frail So so magic no magic on the coin everything looks like it's been here forever skeletons not moving Yep, yep. I totally understand. Here's the deal. Over there, I found a chess set and calligrapher's tools, and the chest was trapped. Why would this chest, filled with gold, not be trapped? Would you Logically, like me to actually all I can think is all of this? Bodies here for a reason. Would, would Would you like? I have a theory. I'd like to hear it. So there is a large bank of fog out that draws people in. There is a seaside cavern with bodies everywhere, filled, among other things, with a bunch of bodies, but also a bunch of old and or weakened casks and crates and chests. And the only way in here with any of that is that pool of water. So... What if the fog bank is there to lure ships in and whoever lives under the water has been taking from and hoarding whatever they can from shipwrecks? Mm. So I actually would wager money that the chest is probably not cursed, but there's something else around here. Okay. Okay. So, what if the chest isn't travel worthy? What if we just burn the chest, see what happens, and then we pick up the gold afterwards? What if it all spills out? Why burn it? Well, we're going to have to scoop it all out of there anyways. If we light it on fire, we could get all the way to the other side of the cavern before any hidden trap mechanisms that I can't detect go off, potentially. But aren't you a great thief? I know when I see a pile three feet high of dead bodies to be wary. How much do you know about pirates? I know they don't hoard three feet high body piles. But do you know the most important thing about pirates? Pirates are lazy. This is this is perfect. They don't have to do any work. No one's going to come in here. Look at all these bodies. Do you remember the Sawajin? This is something they would do. Okay. I forfeit I mean, any gold that I would get from this chest, and I'm going to move all the way over here from touch it. Oh, I'm not and saying we need to trap, take the gold. I'm just I saying. I'm just saying. 
th that is probably what has caused this. We, we still may have a problem with something being cursed. I don't know. Um, I, I mean, ultimately, we have bigger fish to fry than hauling out this gold right now. So, yes. So absolutely. let us We exit. could feasibly leave. Yeah. And see what else we find. And if we can even find a way out of here. Because if we can't get back through that mist, it's all moot. Agreed. And I didn't really detect too many comings and, or really any comings and goings from that pool of water. When I looked about. Let us go check that down those ladders and see about that beach. Hmm. Okay, All right. Leave the cavern. Yes. All right. And we live to fight another day. It's a lot of fucking gold. I mean, a day is a that's a bit much, but at least another like seven minutes. Hey, the, the big pile of fucking gold will be there for fifteen minutes while we check to see if we're going to get ambushed. Yo, you're back. in the water. Theo's in the, wa <laughs> Theo's in the water. You <laughs> fell off the edge. <laughs> Blub, blub, blub. <laughs> All right, so you guys find yourself back outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll head over to where we found that there. Um, what do you call it? Uh, those uh, ladders going down. Oh, it's smoking. Oh, yeah, those things. Okay. Gunks. All right, so you guys make your way over to the ladders. And yes, uh, they do descend about 20, 25 feet to a small ledge. And you can see, Runar, as you look down, uh, that there is what appears to be an old fire ring on the ledge itself. Okay, I'll carefully start going down the ladder. Okay. Okay. How far is a drop is it to that next little ledge? Uh, it's about 20 to 25 feet to the first ledge, that, that dark, uh, like, rocky ledge with the fire pit. And then it's another probably 25 to 30 feet down to what you can see now is a beach. Should we set up a, a rope, or what do you think? Yep. Yeah, let's, let's tie off a rope to maybe this closest tree here. I mean, it's how these are. How far down are these ledges? Twenty. All said, it's it's about fifty to sixty feet from where you are to the beach below. Okay. And about halfway down is uh, is that dark ledge of rock. Do these ladders look pretty rickety? Yes, extremely rickety. Theo will tie off to the tree he's next to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you tie right. off a rope and you lower yourselves down, and easy enough, you make it down to that first ledge, Runar. And you can see that it looks as though someone, maybe not recently, but someone had spent some time here. It looks like it has been cleaned out. Uh, underneath, there's a little bit of an overhang underneath the ledge where maybe you could camp in a storm, for example and be just high enough to be out of the reach of maybe the high tide or the waves. You're not 100% sure. But you look down below and you can see that there are actually two ladders that are fastened with uh, vines to, uh, to the rocky ledge uh, that go all the way down. And it looks even more treacherous than the first ladder that you, that you went down. <laughs> but you're able to make it down so, onto yeah, the beach. Hope. Yeah, it's rope. just sketchy as hell. Yeah. Watch your step. And as you make your way down, uh, the rest of you guys follow, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. You find yourself on a beach that is littered with bits and pieces of ships, uh, dinghies, masts sails and ropes rigging that is just twisted and tied up and looks as though it's been smashed and pushed up against the the side of the cliff face all around you. Just massive debris piles 
crabs, see. small crabs run along the, uh, as, as you approach the water's edge, they run along the sand and disappear into little holes as the water laps and, and, and uh, crashes on the shoreline. It's not super stormy. It's not very violent. It's just this kind of steady wave action coming into this little cove. And you can see out a, a little ways out into the water. You see is that there is debris also floating amongst the waves. Theo. Do the, do the thing with your eyes. Some of this wreckage might be new. Yeah, I'm going to walk to the north here and see what I see. I will, in fact, cast Detect Magic with my magic eyes. Okay. Uh, Runar and Theo roll perception checks. We'll say because of the fog, roll with disadvantage. Again, you can really only see about 15 feet. Well, I got a 14. Nine. That's not bad. Yeah, you, you look about, and in your general vicinity, as you scan the debris, you kind of walk back and forth on the beach, Theo, and you don't detect any magic items. You, it's just massive amounts of broken paddles and oars and, and parts of ships, masts, um, old barrels and baskets. Uh, Runar, you walk down the beach as well, and you can see that above you, about 50 feet, is the cliff face. It gets lost in the mists above you, as most most everything is obscured. But you can see, again, like crabs and some seaweed along the shoreline, but nothing, nothing that really uh, stands out, except for you do find washed up against this ridgeline here, Tucked up underneath, perhaps, the uh, the cliff face are the remains of a body. Possibly more than one body. Um, can I go up to them and kind of see if I can see if, if they are, like, wearing anything identifiable or anything like that? Any kind of, I don't know, if they have any, like, packs or anything on them that might give me some information um sure yeah you can do an investigation check if you'd like 10 and byron what are you guys up oh, to seven you know i think byron's just gonna sit on the beach kind of like chill out for a minute like the the climb down the ladder took a lot out of it it's gonna you know, maybe we'll watch the crabs crawl by. Okay. I'd probably look through this wreckage here, maybe, uh, you know, step out a little bit into the waves perhaps and, and, and kind of take a look at what we've got going on, you know, out in the water a bit as far as I can see. Okay. So obviously there's other folk. Uh, digging around up up the shore. Yep. Go ahead and roll a uh, perception check. Runar, as you look around at this body, you see that it's far too decayed to really make anything out. It does, however, look to be a knoll. Hmm. The clothing and that sort of thing is really hard. It, it's barely even there anymore. And it appears as though this body may have been here for a while. It, as you get closer, you get the, the strong odor of death and decay, and you kind of step back a little bit from it because it's offensive to your nose. Tenok, you, you look about, and you see, um, let's see how far out. You see some debris. You see a little bit of debris uh, right in this area that gets uncovered by the waves occasionally and then gets covered back up just at the edge of your at your edge of your vision because beyond about here the the fog picks up again mm. so it's really tough to see beyond that so. yeah i'm not going to go out there Uh, Runar, roll a d20 for me. Okay. 
One. Okay. All right, guys. What do you want to do down here? Theo's just kind of open his mouth and to go. So maybe the no pirates crashed here. And their wreckage is one of the wreckages out there because I don't see any more nulls. Yeah, I don't think we're getting the second ship out of this. There's a whole lot of nothing here. Very glad we did not bring the first ship. There's there's got to be something more here. There's something we're missing. This is... Is it still out here in the water? Is what? Their ship. Maybe it's right out there. Yep, probably. Underneath I mean, there's all some, that. there's stuff out there. Yeah, I could. You can see it. Like, you know, and I'll kind of point to the area here. Like, there's there's stuff under the waves there. I'll wade out into the water. How far can I go before when it's until it's like chest height? Um, you can get to about right here. Um, sorry, I don't know if you can see that. I'm on the I wrong la sorry. layer, right here. Okay. Yep. And I got um, my helm yep. on. I got my okay. helm on. I'm just gonna dunk underwater. See what okay. I see. Roll a perception check. Just a straight roll, not not at disadvantage. Twenty-three. Wow. Yeah, you dunk down underneath, um, you know, soaking your entire body, and you look forward and you see what appears to be the wreckage of a ship right in front of you. You can see the keel of the ship. Um, it is it is broken into many pieces. There is a a crate floating here and a crate floating here, but the most important thing you see is what appears to be a quite sizable sh remnants of a ship. Does it look As like you, part it's of it's down deeper from where water? you are? Cause where you are, it drops down into a deeper water, probably about 30 feet deep shortly okay. after where you are, it drops down significantly and it's down at the bottom of this, I guess a little um, depression in the, in the cove here. Can I tell if parts of it are sticking up out of the water still? It would not appear from the angle that you're looking at it. It would not appear that it sticks out of the water. It appears as though it is demolished and strewn across the bottom of this cove. Also roll another D20 for me. Well. Okay. So I'll come back out of the water, start moving back. I can see a ship down there. Uh, it's completely submerged, just wreckage. It drops off pretty quick. It's probably more than one down there. If we wanted anything from under there, we'd have to dive for it. I do not particularly want for anything from out from under there. You guys do, as, as Theo says that it, there's probably more than one ship, you get the sense now that as you've looked at all this debris, that yeah, there's there's more than one style. You guys are, some of you are sailors. There's more than one style of construction represented on the debris. There, uh, there are masts from multiple ships. You can tell from the type of wood, Byron, you're, you, you've got, you're a boatswain. Uh, you can tell carpentry. You can see that there are multiple ships represented in the debris on the shoreline that you're standing on right now. It just kind of you just kind of realize it, like, oh yeah, there's multiple ships have crashed and sunk here. Oh yeah. So the only question is, who put all of that in the cave? And that isn't necessarily a question we need to answer, as I believe we can answer safely the other question of. Where are the other gnolls? There are no other gnolls. Yep. Yeah, everything oh, around here is dead. Who cares? Like gnolls? Well, there's only a few of them. They're not very scary. You think something's here? I think magic mist doesn't happen on its own. I, I agree. don't think. I don't think that gold's cursed. I think we should go take it and leave. 
Are you gonna carry it? Throw it in your bag of holding. It could. That seems like the best idea because I'm not carrying that. That thing probably weighs like close, close to seventy pounds. Ah, oh, it's not a big deal. The more I think, I mean, the more we see it, it looks like it's just a stash spot, you know? Like maybe yep. survivors. Then let stuff us in get there. the gold and yeah, proceed to try and leave. They their gold out. I mean, I, I can't explain the skeletons, but we were in there poking around and nothing happened. Yep, because we didn't touch the obvious trap. <laughs> but let's go check it out. I mean, let's go grab it. Let's see what happens. I'm going to stay right. outside the cave while you guys do that. All right. I'll listen. Just scream if you need help. That, that strikes me as an excellent way for you to get killed, Byron. You're right. Okay, I'll come with you, but here's <laughs> the deal. If it's not a trap, you can have my share of the gold. If it is a trap, I get all the gold. Byron, just, called it. Byron, Byron, how about we get out of it. the first, and then we'll worry about that. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get the gold, you got to do the work. I am doing the work. I'm saving all, right. all of your lives. It doesn't sound like it. Let gentlemen, yeah. let's get back to the cave first before yeah. we even worry about it. There could be a dragon in there by now. Yeah. Okay. 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 Using the rope, I'm going to start climbing back out. Okay. Right. Yeah, you guys make your way off the beach and oh, yeah. backtrack your way to the uh, to the gold chest. And who's going in? Is everybody going in for the chest? I guess so. Yeah, I think we all should just so we, we don't have to split layers on the map. Oh, I'm more than happy to split layers, whatever you guys want to do. Splitting layers worked so well for us that one time. Let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's get this gold. All right. Yeah. So you guys make your way back into. I'm just going to go to this screen here with the cams. You guys make your way back into the the cave backtracking through the, the that left uh, fork, squeezing your way in. And uh, as you do, Dan Virius is like, yeah, how do we uh, get the chest through this pinch point? We're not taking Good the chest. Question. We're going gonna, to put as much as we can in the bag. Like battering ram. Be like, yeah, we'll see this. Don't you have a bag, Runar? Yeah, I got a bag of holding. I can put as much yeah. as we can in Three there. of us have bags of holding, one of yeah. whom is mostly full, admittedly. But Theo's is actually... Um, uh, let me check something really quick. For the record, Theo definitely took the box of books. Uh, other than that, I've got a few potions, a few other books, some quality clothes, hand crossbow, fine dulcimer... And a lot of just like field notes and small things. So Theo probably has. Is the dulcimer. So did you take the case for the dulcimer too? I'm assuming you probably would. Yeah. If it yeah. came with one, definitely. Yeah, that was in a case. Yep. Okay. So Theo has um, clearly some room. Some room. Yeah. You Between the three of you guys, you could probably fit. You think you could probably fit most of the gold. So nice. you guys, uh, you guys all approach the, the chest. Who's going to, who's going up to the chest? Just do three, two, one, and like I'll go for it. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the one to grab it. I'm chilling You're out. Too one scared. With the bag. You're I the one with the chill bag. Out back here. All right. By the bones. Ten X, stay close to me. <sighs> okay. I almost hope there's a bunch of fucking undead. <laughs> All right. Gingerly, uh... I'm gonna start slow. Gingerly with a dagger, I'm gonna like pop a little gold piece out on the floor. Do you even know how traps work? <laughs> you roll the gold piece and it kind of rolls past your feet towards the uh, skeletons mm -hmm. that are about right here, uh, right by the torches. Yeah. Nothing seems to happen. All right. Pick I'm it up. Start, I dare you. Pick it up. Picking up gold. Okay. You just start grabbing gold and, and at... at some point you're just kind of overwhelmed with this this thought of like holy shit this is a lot of gold as you look down it's a massive pile of gold in front of you and you just start scooping it into your into your uh your bag of holding and and uh, Theo you're watching him as he's just 
got a smile on his face, you know, Runar happy that he's finally going to be able to pay his crew and pay off the bills of, of the, uh, the ship. He looks pretty excited. And <laughs> no, and there's no, and <laughs> as you do <laughs> feel, um, you're, you're kind of standing there because you're right there next to him. You're watching this happen. You look down and you notice that, yeah, the first couple of coins were definitely gold, but the coins underneath look weird. Runar, and stop. You, you reach down and pick one up and you look at it. And it is a wooden coin. And as you have this realization that this is, this is not a chest of coins, it is a distraction, as Byron might say, a trap. You hear the pile of bones behind you start to shift and morph and rise up and reform into this large serpentine creature. Its, its form composed of interlocking bones and its head of some unnamed long dead beast as a boneyard rises above you. I'm really tired of like these bone amalgamations. And I and I need you. I know they're the best. And I need you all to roll initiative. Yeah. He just goes, really? If only someone were to have checked for traps. We did. And we detected magic, so And we yeah. detected magic. Boneyard. I love it. This is like a skeleton centipede. Kind of, yeah. Boneyard. Or a skelepede, if you will. Skelepede. Now, my, what I want to know is Byron absolutely shitting himself as, as skeletons form up into larger bone creature. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, Runar, you are at the top of the order of initiative, but we are going to go ahead and stop here as the <sighs> bone creature forms behind you and you look back, you've got your hands full of gold. Theo is looking at a piece of gold and turns around and you hear Dan Veer say, Oh, uh, fellas, fellas! And that's where we'll end tonight's session. Nice. We will begin next time with some combat. With He's a big It's a big boy right there. He's a little chunky. There are so many good bone creatures. There really are. In wiz here, let's just let's go to the map here so people can see what we're talking about. I didn't have the map on for everybody. Yeah, there are some cool bone creatures in uh D, &D that's for sure. So remember Boneyard. I don't know. Oh, I have this too. Um uh, nope. can't hear you, Kirk. Remember, like three minutes ago, <laughs> three foot tall pile of bones. Yeah, Bad idea. Don't do it. Oh, you got some wood painted gold. For no, sure. technically, totally. Byron has my, it. Byron my has just a bunch gold. of wood coins. Oh, There's I the boneyard. Hear that? It's a boneyard. Yep, boneyard. I'm throwing up and and wishing I. It is undead, so it's gonna have a um, it's gonna have an attraction to Mr. Theo. <laughs> Thank goodness, because he's got you still complete. you've still got that uh, talisman, which is Why uh, it's so nice. I do, do want to throw out there that this cannot fit through that tiny little chasm. Right. So if we're quick, what if it is able to deconstruct itself? And push through, and then pull those bones back out, like a like a bone slinky. Then this may be the last time you ever see Byron. <laughs> With Byron's stealth rating, who says we've ever we've ever seen him? All That's true. Of a sudden, he is. He's not easy to see. Gone. That's true. And where he was is fire. Everywhere you look, it's fire. Fire and bones. Ooh. 
I like it. Fire and bones. What more do you need? All right, guys. I'm going to have to sign off. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you watch this crazy episode of walking around the beach, some beach combing. <laughs> it was from uh, the beach combing. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll catch you next week as we uh, dive into what appears to be an interesting combat. We'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Well, later, everybody. Bye. Bye.